is your name, Lord. You are so good, oh Lord. And I will worship you forever. Spirit and in truth. I will worship, I will worship, spirit and in truth, Lord, I will worship. Holy, holy, son of extras, tell him and there, son of extras, tell him and there, son of extras, and I am a bear, son of any of them, the soul of us, the bear of Madeira. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord, holy is the, holy is the, holy is the Lord. Get a vessel of on the valley of a man, all of the valor of man, dear I go. Son of every man, the every man, and the devil, my door, and the every man, the living control of all, so the door of my mirror, dear. 
Lift up your voice, lift up your voice. Sala Bagilero, my man, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice and shout to the Lord. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice and praise His unto the living God. Lift up your voice. Oh, lift up your voice in praises the living God. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice and praise. Lord, we lift up our voice and praise you. <laughs> Lord, we lift up our voice and praise you. Lord, we lift up our voice and praise your holy name. We lift up our voice and praise you, O oh God. Oh Lord, we lift up our voice and we shout to the Lord of glory. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. <laughs> shout to the Lord. Sing praises to His. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Sing praises. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Sing praises. Shout to the Lord, all the earth sing praises to the Lord our God. Shout to the Lord. 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 Sing praises to the Lord. Come on, man, every man, man, do. Sit in the middle of the sura. Give an angel to the curamendo. Shout to the Lord! Shout, 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 shout! Shout, 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 shout! Shout to the Lord! Shout to the Lord! Shout, shout! Everybody shout! Shout to the Lord! Let the praises go up! Watch the glory fall down. Shout, 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 everybody shout. Shout to the Lord of glory, Lord, we shout to you. Holy is the Lord. Hallelujah. Woohoo! Shout to the Lord, the Lord of glory. Lift your voice and shout. Shout to the shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord. Everybody shout, shout to the Lord, shout to the Lord. Everybody shout, shout, shout. Lord, we lift our voice, we shout to you. Mama, mama, devil, Solomon, devil, Makaya. Woohoo! <laughs> Lord, we lift our voice, we shout to you. Shout, 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 shout to the Lord. <laughs> shout to the Lord. Everybody shout, 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 shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord. I will lift my voice. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I will lift up my voice and shout to you, oh God, for the goodness and for the grace and for the mercy. <laughs> Holy is the Lord. God, I'm on Jesus, I'm on Godombre. Get him on Jerusalem, I'm a dear. God, I'm John J. Limbamal and Bell in a Monday. God, I'm on Jesus, I'm on Mambodora. God, I'm on John J. Limbangalia. God, I'm on Game, Babal and Mondo, Babalan, Babal and Jason, Babal and Bendo, and Bell in a Mando, Malamalela. Baba la man de ben on chapa la nom de ben la man de ben la man de ben la nom de de baba la baba la baba la baba la let the baba la let the glory baba la baba la baba la hey let the glory baba la baba la baba la baba la baba la baba la let the glory baba la baba la baba la let the glory baba la let the rivers flow out everybody shout Shout to the Lord of glory. Shout to the Lord. 
Shout to the Lord. Everybody shout. Come shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord of glory. Shout to the Lord. Lift your voice and praise to God. Oh, everybody shout, 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 shout to the Lord. Lift your voice and praise and praise to the Lord. Everybody shout now, hallelujah. Everybody shout now. Oh, shout to the Lord, hallelujah. I lift up my voice in praise to your name. I will praise you, Lord, with everything. I lift up my voice in praise to your name. I will praise you, Lord. With my everything, I will lift up my voice in praise to your name. I will praise you, Lord, with my everything. I will lift up my voice in praise to your name. I will praise you, Lord, with my everything. I will lift up my voice in praise to your name. I will praise you, Lord, with my everything. I will lift up my voice in praise to your name. I will praise you, Lord, with my everything. I will lift up my voice in praise to your name. I will praise you, Lord, with my everything. I will lift up my voice in praise to your name i will praise you lord with my everything i will lift up my voice in praise to your name i will praise you lord with my everything i will lift up my voice in praise to your name i will praise you lord with my everything I bring my heart, my soul, my spirit. I bring my body to you now. I bring all the things you blessed me with, oh God, to worship you. I will lift up my voice. I will lift up my song. And I'll praise you, Lord, with my everything. I will lift up my voice. I will lift up my song. I will praise you, Lord with my everything hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus i say that with all your heart hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah <laughs> Father, we thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that breaks off every yoke. Father, I thank you for the authority of your word that brings change to everything about our lives, beginning with our heart and our spirit. Lord, you've taken us and you've transformed our whole being, spirit, soul, and body. It's all yours. It's filled up with you through and through. And you all that we desire and you all that we want. And Father, tonight we pray in Jesus' name that every person in this place will receive those things that you so desperately desire to fill them up with. That every person in this place who has a sick or diseased body would be healed. That every person in this place that has any kind of torment or struggles or harassment from things that belong to this world and things that belong to a demonic realm, I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that every yoke would be broken by the power of your divine working spirit. By the wonderful work of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> by the wonderful working power of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Tonight we tell you in Jesus' name, rise up from the place that you're in. Rise up and begin to shine with glory. 
Christ Jesus who lives within, the Holy Spirit who is with you and in you, desires to show you all the things that God has purposed to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Mama Malala Mango, Mana Blang de la Mango, Stokore Mangle la Mangle, Roma Mando, Sete la Nai 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 Lo. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Zora mama mandel, mama mandel, le 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 le. No na 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 mandel, mama le le le. Mama mandel, ya lo lo lo. Mama na 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 ni sere. Hallelujah. There is a river that makes glad the city of our God, and that river is flowing. In me, and that river is flowing through me, and that river is right there in you right now. Let that glory flow out in worship and in praise, ha, <laughs> and in thanksgiving to the living God. Let that river flow out in worship and in praise. With thanksgiving to the living, ha! Woohoo! Let that worship and that praise, let that river flow out. Ha. With thanksgiving to the living God. La la mande ra mande si la la mange ra mande lin mande ro mundo ro sit na 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 de ra na de ye ye la ya ya ha la. Hallelujah, Sarabaya, Hallelujah, 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 thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Ma brava mangeri, ma ma mandela mangoro. Zeri ma 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 mandero, ma mandoro, mangele mandela, la mangela, si la na mangera, ma ti so to io la manduro. Zora ma ma mandela. Corra ma ma mandero, ma mangero, ma mangolo, su ne bananiera, ma mandala. Alleluia. La mamma la nambera ma non do la mangia la carne ma la la nambera ando si la Thank you Lord Jesus Hallelujah Thank you Lord Jesus for the glory of your love and mine Hallelujah You know, one of the things that we dedicated to doing is seeing God's people be able to understand how that they can hook up with the realm of divine glory and flow and the anointing of the Holy Ghost all the time. It's a wonderful privilege to live in the manifest presence of Jesus. Some people have only understood it just in terms of the manifest presence of Jesus during a revival week or, or during a church meeting or during ministry time. But there is a manifest presence of God that you can live in that will impact everything that comes out of your mouth and everything that you feel in your emotions and your attitudes. It's a wonderful life. It's called, it's called life and life more abundantly. It's the unlimited, immeasurable life of God that has come into our life. And, it's not, and, and, and it's come in such immeasurable 
quantity that Jesus said out of our belly would flow rivers of living water. And he's talking about, we could say it like this, out of our bellies would flow rivers of expressions of the Holy Ghost. Rivers of living water, this spake he of the Holy Ghost, which was not yet given at that time in John chapter 7, verse 39, but now has been poured out abundantly upon us all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Baby, I want, I want you to get ready. Now, now you're going to have to just understand this. The first day we've had meeting in here, the sounds all take us a while to get it figured out, the sound in this room. And um, some people you can hear up here, some people you can't hear. They're all actually playing believe it or not. The, 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 atmosphere, the, the, the room is filled with paint smell, and hopefully that got the door open over there so that it's a little bit of circulations going on. And um, things are a little bit challenging, you know, from those, those kinds of perspectives. But I'm telling you right now, the power of God is here present to teach you <laughs> how to be able to flow in something that will take you beyond all the other things that might otherwise be distracting you, be in the way, be hindering you. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and this is what we want to teach people, and this is what our hearts de devoted to having. We don't, we didn't know, I'm not interested in singing a song. I'm interested in worshiping the Lord. I've never been interested in just singing. <laughs> well, there was a time before I knew the power of the Holy Ghost. You know, I might have been interested in just singing. But this wonderful flow of the Spirit of the living God that produces within us this worship that is in the Holy Ghost and that is in truth. And Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, 15, he said, what should we do then? He said, we're going to pray in the Spirit. And then we will pray with the understanding also, showing that this wonderful, glorious declaration that Christ Jesus has sent up on high, this these wonderful, inexpressible expressions of the Spirit of the living God that we call the language of the Spirit or the tongues of fire, begin to come flowing up out of us, and then it, it goes to the prayer with the understanding also. But, and then it goes with the singing too. What we should go, we do then. We will sing in the spirit, and then we will sing in the understanding also. Oh, I, I believe, personally, I believe that when, um, the, when Peter or, or Paul or any of the ministers so long ago would have a meeting that all meetings just started off with just like it did on the day of Pentecost. I can't fully prove that to you. You'll know one day. You'll say, wow, Pastor Mark was right about that. <laughs> and uh, hallelujah. You know, you can look in, you can look in, in for example, you can see also in, in Ephesians chapter um, 6 and verse 18. It says that we're supposed to pray in the spirit with all petition prayer and supplication prayer. That's what the scripture says. You can, you know, some people looking at me strangely. And reality of it is, is it's been defined what it means to pray in the spirit. And, and of course, it's praying in the spirit with, with that wonderful realm of tongues that then brings a prophetic utterance and or an interpretation of something. Tongues, which is a song that you could sing with the understanding or a prayer that you could pray with the understanding. Look at that. Just look at it for just a second. Why don't you stare at it? This is all we want to teach you how to do tonight. We want to teach you to do this. Hallelujah. Some of you are sick and weak and you need to go ahead and sit down. I'm going to dance around for a while longer. But we have a healing meeting tonight so that you can be made strong. Hallelujah. Praise God. The scripture says, Hallelujah. Praying in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. Hallelujah. Jude said, build up yourself in your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So that's what we're doing. Boy, is everybody just that tired? You sitting? You're going to just sit? You just going to Baby, about ready? Are you about ready? I'm on the long good day. You're just going to sit. Did, did somebody come on and say, please have a seat? If you're really tired, if you're really tired, you can sit down. Now I'm just going to have to dance around. We're going to sit around. We're going to sit down and sit around for a while and watch uh, Richard get up and dance around. <laughs> Hallelujah. But right now, we, 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 we just we want to bring you into a place. We want to bring you into a realm. 
that you don't look if you don't if here's what i've seen again and again people only understand how to get touched from heaven when there's a man of god around i can't go around with you <laughs> they don't know how to get touched in a meeting well that's okay if you're going to be in the meeting all day long that's fine every day and the scripture does tell us to assemble ourselves all the more as we see the day approaching so that's good but what we, want to, what we want to do tonight is we want to once again encourage you to understand that there is a realm of heaven and I don't care how much of the anointing you've experienced in your life, how much of the power of God's moving in your life, it's greater still. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bubba's made it available for you and I to know what is the height, the breadth, the length, the depth, to know the love of Christ Jesus which passes knowledge and there be filled with all the fullness of God. I mean, that's a lot. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank Oh, it's the best. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Just lift, your, just lift your hands towards heaven. Hallelujah. We don't have anybody that can play the piano right now. And we don't really have anybody that can play the guitar right now. Because everybody's lifting their hands towards heaven. Hallelujah. But we want you to be able to receive. We want you to just bow them on today. And the reality of it is you don't need a piano player. And you don't even need a guitar player. And you don't even need a musician. Hallelujah. You have the Holy Ghost. And he just, he, just, he just wants to touch you. He wants to overwhelm you. Hallelujah. He wants to overwhelm you with his goodness. He wants to overwhelm you with his presence. It's all right. It also got my Let me die in the gators. You join them. Try to play something. Surah Man. No one can hear you. 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 Surah Man. Hallelujah. <laughs> There ba 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 ma ma na ma na ze ma ma na Oh holy is the Lord our God Zora ma 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 na ma na ne ze na 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 Hallelujah Zora ma 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 na la ma ze le ma ge le ma ge le Zora ma 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 jo ma ma do ma na bro mo mo
the a church of the United States. Let, let's sing it. Remember, remember, a song is just a prayer set to music. We just, we're going to cry out to God right now for the church of the United States of America. Let your fire, Father, fall on your church. of righteousness to see this very thing happen here in the United States of America and every nation that you would send us to. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will raise up those who know how to pray, that you'll raise up those who know how to preach, that you'll raise up those, oh God, who know how to declare these things that are in your heart, that know how to speak your words so that everybody can understand exactly what you're doing so that we can participate with you in your divine plan to take hold of every heart and every soul of man. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Just lift your hands towards heaven. I'm telling you right now, we command sickness and disease and pain and discouragement goes from you now. In the mighty name of Jesus, be filled up, be strengthened, and be equipped by the power of the living God so that you can stand in this wonderful realm of His divine provision and glory. 
that from this day forward, you'll find yourself being fully resourced with everything that God has provided in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> Say thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Woo. No greater name has ever been named than the name of Jesus. Nothing, no power can stand before that name. No work of darkness, no, no thing, nothing, not in the realms of the spiritual wickedness or in the realms of men can stop that which God has purposed to do and he's going to do it all in him, Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Kerab. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Zabayatora. Sabrabekayete. Ha ha ha. Woo! Sabayati prabeo manani. Sabrabeya pokana zaya. Ha ha ha. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord 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 Jesus. I will Christ Jesus. I will give all the glory to Christ Jesus for his blood. For his blood has washed away every Hallelujah. 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 Oh, how wonderful. Oh, how wonderful. <laughs> oh, how wonderful. Oh, how wonderful. How wonderful. Hallelujah. Oh, how wonderful. <laughs> oh, how wonderful. 
Oh, how wonderful. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, how wonderful. Hallelujah. Oh, how wonderful. 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 Is the name of Jesus, 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 is the name of Jesus. Oh, how wonderful! Oh, how wonderful! <laughs> oh, how wonderful! Oh, how wonderful! Oh, how wonderful is the name of Jesus, 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 is the name of Jesus, Christ my Lord, is the name of Jesus, 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 is the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Oh, how wonderful! Oh, how wonderful! One, oh, wonderful! Oh, how wonderful! Oh, wonderful, wonderful! Oh, how wonderful! Oh, wonderful, wonderful, and a wonderful Jesus. Oh, wonderful, oh, how wonderful, 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 oh, how wonderful is the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus is the name of Jesus, Christ my Lord. Wonderful, wonderful counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God. Oh, how wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Oh, how wonderful is the name of Jesus. Oh, how wonderful is the mighty God. No greater name, all power and authority. No greater name, all power and authority. Every knee shall bow. And my knees are bow, every tongue confess, and my tongue confesses, every knee shall bow, and my knees are bow, every tongue confess, and my tongue confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord. Wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Get a manje, put a mane. Wonderful 
Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God, Mighty God, Jesus Christ, my Savior. Jesus Christ, my Savior. Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior, wonderful, wonderful, Jesus, Jesus, Lord Jesus, wonderful. Wonderful Ooh. Jesus Wonderful, wonderful Hallelujah Jesus Wonderful, wonderful Jesus Counselor Jesus Mighty God Jesus Prince of Peace Everlasting Father, <laughs> He's the Lord God Almighty, and there's none besides Him. He's the Lord God Almighty, and He made Himself our friend, and He made Himself our friend. Wonderful, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Got a mouse, a brave, 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 Hallelujah. Holy Ghost wants to touch you very personally. And he touches us in such a way that we can begin to touch him continually. Listen to me. I know people are lost. That means they don't know how to touch God and be touched by him. Tonight we're here to introduce you to a realm where God will touch you so that you can from the rest of your life, any second, continually, every part of the day, touch him. And when you live in his manifest presence... Nothing else will do but His glory filling you. Hallelujah. On Wednesday night, this Wednesday night, just before Richard comes, on this Wednesday night, we are so honored to have a dear friend who is one of the primary leaders in the House Church of China. And um, there's, probably, there's probably close to 200 million Holy Ghost-filled, mighty, radical army of God people in China, the People's Republic of China right now, and Brother Joshua is one of the foremost leaders, especially when it comes to the, to the impact of sending Chinese missionaries all over Asia, the Middle East, to the unreached people groups. Hallelujah. I mean, what, a, what an army, what a, what, a, what, a, what a privilege to be a part of what God is doing in Asia. Well, we want to encourage you to come and bring somebody. Um, Brother Joshua will be preaching with a baseball cap on and, and sunglasses, not because he's trying to be cool. That wouldn't be one way to do it anyways. But because this is the first time he's ever ministered in the United States of America, security is, is a premium and a big issue in China, especially with respect to all the things that he's doing. There will not be any web broadcasting. There cannot be any cameras. If, the, if, you, if you bring someone or you come with a camera, I will personally come and take it away from you. 
And once I am certain that there is no picture in that camera of Joshua, then you can have your camera back. You understand me? That's really, it just has to be that way. And um, you have to realize there's a lot of people in prison tonight in China. And, uh, and, and when you see Joshua, you see a man who spent half his life in prison for the name of Jesus. And I'm not going to see him go back to prison. This is the first time ever that he's preached ever anywhere in the United States of America or the Western world. And I'm going to be the strong man of security, you know. And I want you to join in with me in my righteous cause. And you be the strong man of security, too so that I don't have to personally come take the camera away. You can reach over and grab the thing. Or you can catch them before they snap the shot, which is better. Okay, we're not gonna search people when they come in the building. That's one thing we're not gonna do. Uh, we're gonna let everybody come in, in the honor system and we pray that no one, will, uh, no one will bring a camera. I cannot emphasize that enough, okay? So don't miss out on this opportunity. I'll just tell you a little bit about Brother Joshua, last time they, I can't tell you a lot about the details of the things they're doing. I just want you to know they're sending missionaries from China, sold out to spend the rest of their life, to die on the mission field in unreached people groups, places where the gospel has never been preached. The last time they threw Joshua in prison, they said, you know, it's gonna really be rough on you. I mean, we're tired of messing with you. We're gonna throw you in with the worst criminals that we got, and you're in the roughest part of the prison, you know. And so they threw him in, and and the prison, in, in, in a particular part of the prison where all the real rough criminals were, and, the, and they started looking at him and said, you know, there is no God because if there was a God, you would not end up in here with us because you're in for some serious trouble. And, you know, they were intimidating him and threatening him. And he laid down and he went to sleep. And he woke up and everybody was sitting there staring at him because he glowed all night. And needless to say, nobody touched him in that prison. You don't touch a glowing man. <laughs> and he was, they gonna put it, they put him in prison for a, a, a number of years, but by, by and large, they let him out early because the glowing man was having too much impact on the prison. And what do you say, your Jesus doesn't exist? Give me a break. Hey, I, let's see you glow, you know, kind of thing. So, I don't know what all Brother Joshua is going to be willing to share with us, but I tell you, literally, he's the leader of a network of millions of God's people in China, and they radical, they're militant. It's such a blessing to be a part of the House Church of China. It's so blessed, such a blessing to have a whole lot of friends like this. Brother Yun always comes to be with us in April, and he wasn't able to come, and so because Brother Joshua is a close friend of Brother Yun. Uh, he was asked to come and, and minister. And so as a result of that authority structure, he's going to be here. And I just want to encourage all of you just to recognize, man, what a gift, what a privilege we have to be such a part that we have been allowed to be trusted by the Lord Jesus Christ to be with his glorious church in the People's Republic of China. Hallelujah. I want... The People's Republic of China has got some pretty big, pretty grandiose plans for you. And I'd rather the church take over there and then if they're going to execute any plans, they'd be executed in the view of <laughs> the will and purposes of God. So there's a lot to be praying about, dear people. We live in perilous times. The church is in peril right now and God's raising up his champions. And the only way you can be a champion in the kingdom of God is totally sold out. You overcome by the word of your testimony, the blood of the lamb, and you don't love your life. Even, even under the death, you're willing to die. Amen. And praise God, we, we are just in expectation that uh, many of you, if not all of you, be raised up to just to do that very thing. Well, let's welcome, welcome Richard and Rhonda Moore, and so, such a blessing to have you guys with us, Richard. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm telling you, all I can do is go, oh. <laughs> <Whew>. <laughs> 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 
The Lord is good. Amen. I am so glad you're here tonight. I'm so glad I'm here tonight. I'm so glad that to be with you and your this lovely congregation and your lovely pastors and my beautiful wife. She was able to make it in tonight. Honey, just stand up. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, we have been, um, since 1990, and this is my 29th year of, of ministry, full-time, but um, together 26 years, and, and uh, 43 nations of the world 63 times. And um, I, I can tell you that... <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord is good. <laughs> I tell you, I, 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 Shuba Raman Topra Basatai, Kurusala Mombu Brava Sista, Amen. Hallelujah. Chakaraba Suta Raba Sista Rabon Satai. That's what you do when you don't know anything in English. <laughs> you just want to worship Him in the Holy Ghost. Soko Robada Raba Sata Raba Kata. How many of you were not here this morning? Wow, where were you? <laughs> yeah, where's all those of you that, where's all the ones that were not here? What, how did I say it? I'm drunk already. <laughs> you're not here to ask. But uh, I can promise you this, you're going to leave here different tonight. I can promise you this. I can promise you this, that the fire of heaven's going to fall on you tonight. <laughs> you know, there's a reason why we're called peculiar. Amen? I want to read something to you. Actually, I thought about this. And I'm going to tell you something. This, this to describe, first off, this describes my wife and I's life. But I, can prom I, I want to read this because I'm thinking to myself, how can I... How can I describe this church, because let me tell you something. <clears throat> Don't take for granted what you have here. And because I'm going to tell you something, the unfortunate thing is this, the majority of churches in America do not allow the moving of the Spirit of God. He's not wanted. The presence of God is not wanted. It's a very unfortunate thing. But to have a place to where the Spirit of God can come, where there's no hindrances, where the Spirit of God can move, and the Spirit of God can do, and He can manifest Himself to the degree that He is for the amount of time that He wants to do it, and He's not hindered, don't take that for granted. Well, that went over like a lead balloon, but it is the truth anyway. Listen to me, because I live in church. I live in church. I, 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 listen, I, <laughs> my wife and I have been to probably 400 churches. We've conducted, since 1990, we've conducted about 7,000 revivals. And for many years, two services a day. I mean, from, 19, from 1990 till probably 2000 and maybe nine or ten, two services a day, 300 days a year, almost 500 meetings. I cannot tell you the years that we've done almost 500 meetings. I said, I've been church more in one, in one year than most pastors ever preach in a lifetime. <laughs> and I tell you, and I say that to say this, because we are so many places, you begin to get the heartbeat of the church. And don't take for granted Listen to this, this hillbilly from Kentucky tonight. <laughs> Do not take for granted what you have here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> so I was thinking. I was thinking because if I... You know, because uh, we, listen, what's here, we, this is how we live. 
I think that's why I feel so one with your pastor. I mean, this is how we live. I mean, listen, we're, we're, we're born and birthed out of the same fire. And, I mean, this is, listen, I mean, this is a dream. I mean, for every pastor, listen, I promise you, if I was a pastor, it's just an example, Lord, just an example. But if I was a pastor, I'm telling you, this is the model. No, no, I am serious. Because why is it, I've always thought, why is it that the uh, churches will have us come and have an explosion with the glory of God, I mean, day after day after day, week after week, and we've done almost, I mean, we've gone as long as seven weeks in churches. And yet, when we leave, they want to take it back to the slop that they had. No, no, and they don't understand. No, 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 this is not just a special occasion. That's a life. It's the life of the Spirit. It's the way of life. It's not just something you do on a, rec- on a special occasion. It's when evangelists come in. No, this is the life of the Spirit. There's no other way. So I, I thought, I, I, I was thinking er, just here, d- tonight, I thought, how am I? Because, listen, trust me, I'm, I, I will brag about a, a body in place all over the world to try to give pastors an example of what, you know, how you should, you know, as a, as a church, how it should be. And I thought, how can I describe this church? <laughs> the leaders of this church and the people of this church. Now, I'm going to read something to you. Cause, and this came to me. This, this is always describes my wife and I's life, but this is going to describe your church. I've actually changed it. It was called the Fellowship of the Unashamed, but it's called, this is actually going to be called the Fellowship of Abiding Place. Come on, man. Come on now. Seriously. And here it goes. I am a part of the Fellowship of Abiding Place. I have Holy Spirit power. The die has been cast. I have stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I am a disciple of His. I won't look back. I won't let up. I won't slow down. I won't back away or be still. <laughs> Listen. My past is redeemed. My, my present makes sense. My future is secure. I am finished with low living. I am finished with sight walking. I am finished with small planning. I am finished having smooth knees, colorless dreams, tame visions, mundane talking, cheap living, and dwarf goals. I no longer need preeminence. I no longer need a position, pundits, or popularity. I don't have to be right. I don't have to be first. I don't have to be tops. I don't have to be recognized. I don't have to be praised. I don't have to be regarded or rewarded. I live by faith. I lean on his presence. I walk by patience. I live by prayer and I labor by power. My face is set, my gaze is fast, my goal is heaven, my gate is narrow, my guide is reliable, and my mission is clear. I cannot be bought, I cannot be compromised, I cannot be deterred. I cannot be lured away, I cannot turn back, I cannot be deluded or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice, hesitate in the presence of my adversary, negotiate at the table of the enemy, ponder at the pool of popularity, or mender in the mise of mediocrity. I will not give up, I will not let up, and I will not shut up until I have stayed up, until I've stored up, until I've prayed up, until I've paid up, until I've preached up for the cause of Christ. I am a disciple of him. I must go till he comes. I must give till I drop. I must, I must preach till all know and work until he comes. And when he comes for me, his own, he will have no problem recognizing me. My banner is clear, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. I am a part of the fellowship of abiding place. There's no other way to describe. (laughs) 
So when people say, where'd you just come from? Let me read it to you. <laughs> Let me show you. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. But he is good. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, Ah, I can't tell. I cannot tell you how easy it is. Just, I feel it. Just stepping over. You know. Somebody says, "What's the order of the service?" It's the order of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I mean, there's no other order. I was in my wife and I. We were in, in Scotland years ago. And I'm gonna say tell you this because that's how I feel right now. We were in Scotland, and I'm preaching in, 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 in Paisley, Scotland, Scotland. And I'm in this church, and the only way I can describe it to you, I was actually talking about the fire of God, and about, it was starting to share my testimony, and an end, which I might do tonight. But as, as I did, I found like a, a mantle coming on me. I mean, it's like if you used to take your coat off and put it on me. That's what it felt like. And I found my, the only way I can describe it to you in the natural is I found myself stepping over from the line was drawn from the natural to the realm of God. And I began to speak in tongues, preach in tongues. I actually forgot English. I did not know English. But I started everything in tongues I feel it right now all over me. And, 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 ha, ha, ha. Shakale babrofa sata. Oh, ho. And, 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 ha, samam rusi talabakata. And I started calling people out in tongues. And I can tell you this. When I, I, as I stepped over, I can tell you there was unlimited power. I literally felt like there was not anything I could not do. I felt I was in the realm of unlimited power, unlimited glory, but also unlimited love. And I cannot tell you how long it lasted. And a lot of things happened that night. But, late, but there was a lady that was there, and she came to me at the end, and she said, she said, Brother Richard, she said, can I ask you a question? She said, how long have you spoke French? <laughs> I said, voulez-vous français? <laughs> oui, oui. <laughs> it's only two words I know. I don't know French, lady. She said, I, I, I know you don't. But see, I asked you that because I had to. Because she said, I knew when you was, because you, you started preaching in English. But she said, I'm from France. I'm just here on business. And I speak French and English. And she said, I know when you went from English and you started speaking in French. And you started saying a lot of things in French. But what stuck out the most to me of what you were saying is that you called me out by my first, middle, and last name. She said, you told me everything about me. She said, not only did you tell me everything about me, you told me what I'm going through, why I'm going through, and how to go free. She said, in the very things that the Lord was talking to me about on the way here tonight, you spoke to me word for word in my native tongue. And she said, I just want you to know that I'm leaving this place totally changed. Now, I saw that lady a couple years later. She just happened to be back in Scotland for business and just happened to come to, to church again at the same time I'm there again. And she's still free to this day. Now, I say that to tell you this. There's a line being drawn. And we, the church, the true church, I'm not, talk, I'm, not, I'm not talking about those who play church. I'm talking about the church, the body of Christ, the church. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you right now, it's already begun to where we begin to step over into the realms of God. Not just for a season, but to live. But it's not just in church, but it's outside of church. To everywhere we go, a great awakening happens. To everywhere we go, 
revival, revival breaks out. Because we're the church. To where we walk down the street and our shadow overcomes a blind man and he begins. To where our shadow overcomes a man in a wheelchair and he jumps up and begins to shout and give glory to God because he's walking for the first time in years and we didn't even touch him. No, I'm talking about the glory of God. We are children of glory. Understand something. We, Our Father, Jesus, when he prayed in Ephesians chapter 1, when he prayed, he said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of when Paul prayed that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, he is the Father of glory. We are children of glory. And everywhere we go, glory should be manifested. Yeah. That's true. Mm. Thank you, Father. For such an anointing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. I feel it tonight. I, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, lives are changing. Even right now, this very moment, the power of God's on some of you. There's a work right now by the Holy Ghost. Because he's been up and down these aisles all night. <laughs> and he's been working and he's been touching. And he's been already manifesting himself unto you. And I'm telling you, you're leaving here tonight totally different and totally changed by the power of God. We're people of glory. We're children of glory. Our Father is the Father of glory. Amen. Amen. Why is it? Why is it that Moses, under the old covenant, and that the children of Israel, for 40 years, could be led by the cloud of glory and by the fire of His presence, the cloud in the day and the fire at night. And supernaturally be fed with manna from heaven. Their shoes and clothes didn't even wear out. Why should it be any less glorious today than it was then? When what we have is far greater. Because God no longer dwells in a temple that's made with human hands. He's come and he's made his residency on the inside of you and I. And I'll take it all another step further. And he has given unto us a name that is above every name. That at the very mention of that name, demons tremble. Yes. Hallelujah. I remember hearing a few years ago, actually many, many years ago, my mentor, Dr. Kennedy Hagen, true prophet of God. He, and of course, everybody don't believe what most of the stuff you say. People, you know, want to, and he was a man of faith, but, uh, but he's only out of 200 and some books he wrote, only four of them was on faith. The rest were among the Holy Ghost and the things of the Spirit. And I remember one night he said, and I'm saying this because this is how it shall be. And it's already beginning to happen on a regular basis. Because we're people of glory. We're children of glory. Our Father is the God of glory. And we're going to walk in glory. And that glory is going to be manifested everywhere we go. These are the last days. This is the end time. And the glory of God shall be manifested everywhere we go. You might be a plumber. You might be, you might be a taxi cab driver. But I'm telling you this. The glory of God shall be manifested in your life and through your life. I remember him telling the story. I hadn't told this in years. I mean years, but I remember him telling the story how he was in this church and this lady, or these two sisters, they, they, were, uh, they were two twins. There was three sisters, but two of them were twins. And the twins brought their one elder, uh, eldest sister to, to his meeting. They went to the mental institution because he was in a mental institution. And they went and got her out and brought her to his meeting. And as they brought her down the aisle for him to pray for her, he said, immediately I was in the spirit. And he said, I saw this demon. He said it was monkey-like. I mean, it wasn't looking like a monkey, but monkey-like, long arms. And this demon was on her shoulder with its it had long arm wrapped around her head. And he said, the moment 
He was in the spirit. The demon knew it. And the demon said to him, I know I have to let her go if you tell me to, but I don't want to. He said, in the name of Jesus. He didn't even get the zus out. He said, in the name of Jesus. And the moment he mentioned that name, he's that, he said that, that demon's arm flung off her head. He fell to the ground and ran, out that, that, ran, ran down the aisle and out the church. And the woman went, snapped, and she was immediately back in her right mind. Now, I'm telling you this. We have a name that's above every name. And the one thing the enemy wants to do is shut your mouth up. But we're part of the fellowship of abiding place. We cannot be shut up. Hello. And I'm telling you, if you could just see Oh, Rasakaraban Satai, what lies ahead for the church, the glorious church of the Lord Jesus. Oh, come on, I I know we can't run very far here tonight, but I can swing from these rafters. I can tell you that. I might be Superman and come out of this thing, God. Shakarabashata. Go with me in your Bibles to the book of Psalms. Hallelujah. 115. And I, I want to I do this, and I don't know how long we'll do it, but then I want to do something else. I feel like the Lord wants me to share with you tonight. You know, earlier this morning, we talked about from Genesis chapter, chapter 17, how, how God revealed himself to Abram as El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough. Understand, he is more than enough. Now understand, he is more than enough. He is more than enough, and he wants to be more than enough in every single area of our life. But we have to allow him. Do you know he wants to be more than enough in your finances? Let me go over this section of the church. Do you know that he wants to be more than enough in your finances? So you have a choice tonight. You can live in the land of not enough, you can live in the land of just enough, or you can live in the land of more than enough. But it's your choice. I choose, I'm going to live over the land of more than enough. Because that's who he is. He's more than enough. Amen? Amen. I remember when somebody said to me, Now, nah, Brother Richard, you don't want to get excessive. Well, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? My father's excessive. He is extreme. What do you don't mean, don't, don't be excessive? Have you seen what he does? When he's involved in anything, I promise you, there is never lack. How can there be lack when the God that is more than enough formed and made and planned it and birthed it? There's nothing. Come on, church. Oh, yeah, I know people say it's radical. No, 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 no. It's just how it should be. It's just called the realm of the spirit. It's called the spirit-filled life. That's what it's called, the Spirit-filled life. And anything other than the Spirit-filled life is missing it. Bottom line. Don't get excessive, Brother Richard. I'm going to show you something tonight. Listen, I'm going to show you that God is excessive. He's extreme. He is the God of abundance. Amen? Amen. You know, this morning when you was, when you was sharing about uh, the, the, the offering, I, I thought of something. I mean, think about, some, think about this now. God's so extreme, he said that he'll open up the windows of heaven, pour you up blessings for that room enough to contain it. That's called excessiveness, folks. Think about when he spoke to Peter. He said, Peter, you let me borrow your boat. Now, I'm going to do something for you. you. Listen, you've been about my business. Now, I'm going to be about your business. Oh, I feel the same thing. I promise you, sister, I feel the same thing. You've been, a, listen, you, 
I'm going to, because of your obedience, I'm going to reward you. Because of your obedience, I'm going to reward you. That's what he said. He said, Peter, let down your nets. Now, Peter's faced with a decision. He's faced with a choice. And, 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 and he started to get over into to doubt. He started to get out of his head because he said, But Lord, we have fished all night and caught nothing. Do you honestly think that means anything to the one who's more than enough? The very one who made the ocean, the very one who made the water, the very one who made the fish, you just let him use your boat. And now he's saying, let down your net because there's something I want to do for you. But faith is required on your part. And he said, Lord, we fished all night and caught nothing. But then he came to your assistance. He's to your senses. And said, but nevertheless, Lord, at your word, I'm going to obey you. At your word, I'm going to do what you told me to do. And he let down his net, and all of a sudden, we see the excessiveness, the abundance, the extremeness of God. The fish that were not there, all of a sudden, they came in such quantities that the nets began to break and the boat began to capsize. He had to call his partners over to come help him, for there's a great haul, there's a great catch. What was it that brought the fish to the net? The one who calls himself and describes himself is El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough. And at Peter's faith, by his faith, and at his obedience, the power of the abundance and the glory of God was released. They got a hold of the multitudes of fish and brought them to the net. I call that abundance. I call that excess. I call that extreme. And he said, he said, those that are willing and obedient, something's going to happen. You're going to eat the good of the land. Understand something. If he wants you to eat the good of the land, then that also means he wants you to wear the good of the land. He wants you to live in the good of the land. He wants you to drive the good of the land. <laughs> oh, finally I got somebody going to dance with me tonight. <laughs> and I was thinking, this is so cool, Rabbi Tata. Shalala I was thinking of a man in 1904 was in debt at that time $100,000 $100,000 in 1904 was a lots of lots of George Washington's wasn't it a lot of money and you got a hold of this book called The God of the Tithe and after reading the book, he said, I can prove that God is real from the tithe. And from that day on, he began to tithe. He began to honor God. And which, by the way, it's not paying tithes. Don't even use that term. It's not paying tithes. It's honoring God. We honor him. Amen. Yes. Year later, he bought this, he bought this uh, patent. A year later, he's so this is two years now, he's totally out of debt. Totally out of debt. And now he has a factory in San Francisco, 1906. And it's the largest factory of its kind. And he just bought the patent. And uh, Actually, I'm sorry, I said 1904. Actually, he bought the patent in, in, in 19, 1900. Six years later now, 
He has the largest factory of its kind. And when I tell you the guy's name, you're gonna, most of you are going to know who he is. And he had a, a factory, his factories in San Francisco. And, but something happened. In 1906, the San Francisco was rocked with an earthquake. And destroyed the whole city. Actually, I was reading some ports on it because when I read about this man and I read about this story, I, I began to look at some stuff. And they said that 75 years later, they were still adding up the bodies. And anyway, so the, you, the great earthquake, they call it the great earthquake of San Francisco, 1906. But then not only did the earthquake destroy and dis demolish everything, but then the city was set on fire. And then this totally, the city's totally destroyed. Now it's destroyed. Now it's all the rubble's being burnt by fire. And he gets a telegram and says, the telegram reads, we're sorry to inform you that you've lost everything. He said, if I've lost everything, then God is a liar. But I know my God is not a liar. And I've lost nothing. And he got on a train. Two weeks later, he, he, he arrives in San Francisco. And the talk of San Francisco is about this man's building. Now, you can imagine. You've seen pictures of... Hiroshima, and when the bomb was dropped, and you see the devastation, well, picture that. But in the midst of that is one lone, beautiful building not touched. Everything around it is totally destroyed and demolished. But there's one building that's not touched. This one building was, was this man's. It had a wooden fence all the way around it. You can, you know, when I tell you the story, you can go look it up for yourself had a wooden fence all the way around it. And the report was that when the earthquake hit, everything on the north, south, east of the building began to shake and crumble, crumble to the ground except this building. When the, fire, when the fire began, the fire came right up to the outside of, the wood, of his wooden fence and flames of fire were jumping over the building. It's the report of the people. And what's so amazing about it is that this man's building was probably one of the most flammable buildings in the city because it was full of gas tanks. Because this man made, his name was Mr. Kerr, K-E-R-R, -R, Kerr Cannon Jars. He made the, the cannon, the jars, you know, the can with. And, and he said, what's even more remarkable, not only was the building not even touched, but the, the building was on the shelves were thousands and thousands of jars not even one jar fell off the shelf. Oh! Now, oh, come on now. When we say he's more than enough, you have to understand he is more than enough. He's more than enough over all your personal interest. Not one jar was fallen off the shelf. Not one jar was cracked. And from that day, every jar that left that building had a track in it to tell the people about Jesus. But he said, I can prove that God's real just by tithing. Because you know what? My Bible says... Not only will he open up the windows of heaven, but my Bible also says that he will rebuke the devourer. Let me tell you something. God rebuked the devourer on Mr. Kerr's building. He couldn't touch it. God said, I will rebuke the devourer. I will rebuke. Listen, you know, you get all these people talking about you know, the warfare. and There is a warfare. I understand that. But some of them do flaky stuff. But understand, you can't get any higher form of warfare than God himself rebuking the devourer. Than God himself coming on the scene and rebuking the devourer. And he said, if you honor me, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. Amen? Now you can understand why now you can understand why the enemy wants to fight this subject of sowing, the subject of reaping, the subject of tithing so much. But I'm going to tell you something. We're radical. We're radical in every area. No, we're radical in every area. 
We're not just radical in our proclamation of the gospel, we're ra- but we're radical in our giving. We're radical in our praying. We're radical in everything because it's fueled by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Jeez. And let me tell you something. You ain't seen anything yet. You haven't seen anything yet. It's just the beginning. I mean, he didn't give you this incredible building. Just to occupy on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights. Oh, he's got something in planned. He's got something that he's going to do. And it's so big that he had to give you a place of 80,000 square feet. Oh, come on. See, he don't do anything little. No, no, God doesn't do anything little. No, no, God doesn't do anything little. No, no, God doesn't do anything little. No, God doesn't do anything little. He's not a little God. He's a great big God. Amen. But he needs your cooperation with him. In order for the power of God to be released, he needs your cooperation. Hello? He needs you to do something. I remember a few years ago, I was praying, told my wife, I said, you know what? I said, we need to get out of debt. We need to get out of debt. This is ridiculous. We need to get out of debt. And I'm saying to her again, we need to get out of debt. But this was in 2007. Because everything, people don't understand how we live. Listen, everything, especially everything's on our credit card, it's, it's all ministry. It's not for ourselves. I mean, bless God. I mean, when the Lord tells me to go, I just, psh, here it is. Book the ticket. And a lot of places you go, I mean, there, listen, there ain't nothing coming back. But who cares? It ain't about that anyway. Ask me if I'm concerned. <laughs> I'm obeying my father. I'm doing what he tells me to do. I'm not worried or in fear about anything. But... <clears throat> I want to tell you this because I, this is for some, from some of you here, that, and the Lord wants me to share this with you. But I was in, in Russia, and I said to my wife, I said to her, I said, you know what? I said, Let, we've, got to get out of the, we've got to get out of debt. And, and we began to pray, and then I, I, I went to Russia. First I went to Latvia, and then went over to, uh, to Russia for a few days, St. Petersburg, Russia. And as I was there... The last night of the crusade, I remember there was this one lady, uh, there was, sorry, there was this one man that was totally paralyzed, took off running. And, um, and as, we were, as we were there, as I was walking on the platform the last night, the pastor, one of the pastors of the church, comes and gives me $2,000. And I said to myself, in my head, I said, Pastor Mark, I said, I'm going to pay, pay for the plane tickets. And so I got up and was just sharing some things. The pastor wanted me to do something, so I did that. And as I'm, as I'm doing what he asked me to do, the Lord spoke to me in an audible voice. As I'm, as, I'm looking at the, uh, as I'm looking at the pastors on the front row, I look at this one pastor. And the Lord said to me, he said, give him the $2,000. Well, I know the Lord's voice. I, listen, I don't argue anymore. No sense in arguing because, first off, you never win. Never. So just do it. Just do what he tells you to do. There's there's a reason for it, ladies and gentlemen. There's something he wants to get to you. But he needs your cooperation for his power to be released. And so I went down to the to the pastor that was with me because when he the, when the other pastor handed me the, the two thousand dollars, I handed it to uh, my friend who traveled with me, and I said, just you know, hold on to this. And so I went down, I said, I need that $2,000. And he looked at me, and looked right in my eyes, and he said, you're going to give it away, aren't you? I said, I go back, I got to obey Father. I got to obey my Lord. So I went, and I, I got it, and I went and gave it to the pastor. And I said, the Lord told me to give you this. And he looks at it, and, and, and him and his wife both started weeping, started crying. And that night, when, then I went up and just did what the Lord told me to do. We had this explosion in, in, in Russia, an explosion in St. Petersburg. And uh, so then afterwards, we went out to have sushi, which is, for me, was a little scary because 
You know, I, I said, I'm a, I'm a biscuits and gravy kind of guy, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm a fried chicken kind of guy, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I come from Kentucky. I mean, the home of fried chicken. I mean, come on. <laughs> Matter of fact, the church I got saved in, Colonel Sanders was a member of that church. No, he was, he was a member of that church. Matter of fact, he walked into the pastor's office and paid off the debt of the church. He put down, he, he wrote, put, put down a big old check, had, had many zeros on it, and he said, pay off the debt of the church, and he did. Colonel Sanders, he, you know Colonel Sanders was a Holy Ghost man, spoken tongues. Shakara bashata. That's why every time you go eat Kentucky Fried Chicken, did you ever wonder why you want to speak in tongues afterwards? Well, there you go. It's Holy Ghost Chicken. Glory to God. And uh, <laughs> I'll tell you that story, but but uh, so we went and had sushi, and I got the very you know. Mild kind. <laughs> so I said to the pastor, I said, Pastor, so is that $2,000 going to help you? He said, yes, thank you, brother. Well, that's not the response I want. So I, I, I learned after, after, you know, after 26 years of marriage and 29 years of ministry, I've learned that if there's anything I want to know, don't talk to the husband. Go right to the wife. Because they're going to tell you everything. And I did, because I asked him, I said, so is that offering going to help you? Yeah, brother, it's awesome. Thank you. Gosh. So I said to the wife, I said, ma'am, that offering, was it going to help you? Oh, she starts weeping. Oh, brother Richard, let me tell you. Oh, let me tell you what that's going to do. That's going to totally get us out of debt, and it's going to totally free us up. We're going to be able to do some of the things that we wanted to do. Oh, thank you. And she just goes on and on. I'm like, why couldn't he said that? Because the husband don't. Yeah, right. Uh huh. Yeah. No, no. Talk to the wife. If you want to know anything, talk to the wife. Because, first off, they got to get so many words in anyway. And. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. <laughs> It'll be nice. And, and so anyway, so we, we left, and, and so I, I got home, and I'm driving down the road. We, we, we went home with nothing, and I gave the offering away. So I'm driving down the road a few days later, and I mentioned to the Lord, I said, Lord, now, what is it that I have to do? Because I've, I've learned out of all these years that if there's something that God wants to do, He needs to find faith. And faith's always in action because faith pleases Him. That's why we must live a life of faith. And if you want to in your life, and I'm going to share about this in a little bit, but if you want to go to the next level in your life, there's always something that's required of you. Always. And so I'm driving down the road. I said, Lord, you know, I'm talking about this dead again. And the Lord speaks to me. And I tell him, tell you, I, Pastor, when he spoke to me, I know, as I'm in my truck, I, I know right where I was on the road. I know the road I was on. I know, I know, Daniel, I know what, I know everything that's going on. I even know the cars that was going on. I mean, it was that real to me. God spoke to me. Because I said, Lord, what about this debt? And the Lord spoke to me. And here's what he said to me. He said, son, what you make happen for others, I'll make happen for you. And then he said to me, he said, what did you just do a few weeks ago in Russia? I said, Lord, well, you spoke to me and you told me to, to give that $2,000 to that pastor. Uh, he said to me, he said, you obeyed me. What did, that, what did that do? I said, Lord, that got him out of debt. He said, what you make happen for others, I'll make happen for you. 30 days later, I get a phone call from a guy. He calls me and he says, he says Brother Rich, what are you doing? I said, uh, I said, man, I just got home from, you know, from a trip, and I'm home this week. And I said, man, I just, I'm just going to just chill. He said, man, he said, good. He said, man, why don't, you, why don't you drive up to where I live? It's in Destin. He said, come, come up to, to, to my, he's got a $3 million condo there in Destin. He said, come up to my condo. He said, man, I just need to, I've been working hard. I need to relax too. He said, man, come on up, and let's just play some golf for the next few days. He said, pray about it and get back with me. I, I'll be there. I mean, some things you don't have to pray about. And I'll be there, you know what I mean? 
<laughs> so I got in my car and, and <laughs> actually, here's what happened. I went to rent a car. And as I, as I go to, my wife dropped me off, and as I go to, to stand in front of the Avis line, there's this man there, and as soon as this man leaves, I step up behind the counter, and when the lady looks at me, the power of God hits her. And she starts laughing uncontrollably. This is an Avis that I'm renting a car. <laughs> See, you're carriers of the glory of God. And the vets, the very thing happened to you today, sister. And she starts laughing uncontrollably. But I'm not talking about, you know, he, he, he. I, I'm talking about, you think she's in a, one, of the, one of the revival meetings. She starts laughing uncontrollably, so much so that some of the other people, because, you know, the car, the car rental places, you know, there's rows of them where people are sticking their head around the corner. And the manager from behind, uh, from behind the, the door there comes, uh, opens the door, comes out to the counter to find out what is going on and why is the lady, because like, she was laughing and loud. And she stood there and she, all she could do is just laugh and say, I don't know what. Ah! <laughs> she said, ah, here's what she said to her boss, I was fine till he stood here. And then it started hitting the boss. And then her eyes get real big and she runs. She turned and she ran out. And she ran back through the door and shut the door. And the lady says to me, she says, who are you? <laughs> I said, I am his servant. I'm a servant of Jesus. And you're experiencing the presence of the Lord. I said, is it good? I said, hey, since you're being touched, why don't you give me a nice upgrade? <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Just, I mean, my, I might be from Kentucky, but my mama didn't raise no dummy. I mean, I might not be the sharpest tool in the shed, but I am a tool. <laughs> and uh, so I got in my car and drove to <laughs> So I got, oh, you know, I'm doing really everything I can. I mean, I might look like I'm normal, but I'm doing everything I can just to make some sense right now, I promise you. I promise you, I'm like, I feel it, glory to God. I feel it. Oh, yeah, it's raining in here right now. I tell you, it's raining in here right now. Oh, yeah, it's raining in here right now. <laughs> so I, I drove seven hours to Destin. And then we're there, and we did one day played golf, and that night went to the seafood restaurant. Then that night, he, he gets a call, my friend, he gets a call, and, and there's this place in, in Alabama. This lady bought a hospital, and she's housing women that's just out of prison. And she says, and she's housing them, and she needs money, and, and she's, she's, because the statistics are most people get out of prison. It's just, it's a it's, it's staggering number of those who go by. And so she, she was, you know, felt like God told her to buy this ho abandoned hospital and it can hold 300 ladies and, and their kids so their kids can be with their mamas. And, 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 and she started, you know, programs to get them in school, to get them a job, so forth and so on. So well, she needed money. So my friend, who now, I've, uh, I'm, I'm up at his place, he's going to go and, 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 you know, bless her with an offering. So he said, look, come with me to Alabama. I said, okay. So I said, I'd come for one reason. I said, I only come, I only go with you is if this lady sent her, 300 ladies, if, if the, the head lady, they call, they call her the love lady, if she will give me a service so I can preach to all 300 of them. I need all 300 of them. She, he, so he made a phone call, and she said, yeah, bring him. So we're driving down the road, and he said to me, so, How's things going in the ministry? Typical man. 
time. <laughs> he said, well, what's been going on? I said, oh, glory. He said, but how are the finances in the ministry? The Lord's good. He said, but how are the finances in the ministry? I said, the Lord always comes through. And then he like hollered at me. He said, that's not what I'm asking. How's the finances? I said, well, he, I'm gonna holler. if he's going to holler, I'm going to holler back at me. So I said, well, all right, if you want to know, I need a miracle. How's that? He said, why didn't you just tell me that? He said, the reason I called you is because the Lord spoke to me, and the Lord told me to give you $100,000. Is that going to help you? I said, hold on. Let me give him glory a little bit. Come on, I got to give him glory. Come on. Then he said, but he said, no, only that. He said, is that going to help? He said, no, only that. He said, I got something else, clo- uh, something else closing in a, in, in a few months, and I just feel like I'm, I'm going to give you $100,000 from that too. So I said, hold on. It's called being a part of the fellowship of abiding place. For we're the fellowship of the understanding. We are sitting, dancing, glorifying in the midst of the heathen. I'm not just going to glorify him in church. I'm going to glorify him everywhere I go. Come on. I call my wife. Oh, you can give you. All I can tell you, heaven was on the other end. Then I went to the church. I went to church. I went to this this Love Lady Center. Oh, sakarabashista! I feel it, my, 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 my. And what I'm about to tell you is, oh, it's, oh, salalamashata! It's going to be so commonplace in these last days, and it's already begun to happen. And then we're gone. But let me tell you what happened. We go, and my wife and I, we go, and we go to this place, and, and she, they, they, she said, you have an hour. <laughs> an hour? I, I'm like, I want to rebuke that. I got an hour. But, you know, there's some other stuff going on, and, okay, I'll, I'll listen. <laughs> God can move in an hour. So I said, Lord, I said, these ladies, and listen, every single one of them have a disease. Every single one of them. Every single one of them, all 300 ladies, have been beaten, have been abused, have been raped. Have, they have diseases. Uh, many of them are lesbian, and many of them have AIDS. And I said, Lord, I got an hour. I, I, I need these ladies to like me right away. I don't want them to decide for 55 minutes, okay, I'm going to like this country, boy. No, I need right away. So here's what the Lord gave me an idea. So I got up, had an hour. I said, now, ladies, before we go any further, I have, I'll tell you my name is Richard Moore, but before we go any further, I have to apologize to you. And they all looked at me. I had their attention. I said, I need to apologize to you for all the bastards that's been in your life. Because most of you, for all of you, had, you had a bastard father, you had a bastard husband, you had bastard boyfriends, you had bastard family members. You just had a bunch of bastards in your life. And I apologize. Immediately, boom. Matter of fact, one lady, one lady shout, Whoo, I like this guy. <laughs> and let me tell you something. The glory of my wife can testify. The glory of God came in that night. There was this one lady. She was paralyzed. The fire of God hit her. She jumped up and she starts dancing, and the place came on glued. Then there was this other lady who was like, just like the, 
the mean one of the bunch, you know. She was the one that all the ladies feared. You don't mess with this sister. And I tell you, but I'm to something. The power of God came on her. She starts scrouting. She starts screaming. She starts laughing uncontrollably. Starts dancing. And immediately, the power of God began to sweep throughout this whole place. And these ladies, one by one by one by one by one, till every single one of them was having an encounter with God, the God of glory, my Father. Listen to this. And I gave an altar call, and out of 300 women, 290 of them gave their life to Jesus for the very first time. And the reason 10 did not is because they'd already had. Shakarabo Soprema, Shana Pasakana. Oh, hallelujah. No, understand who we are. We're the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father is the God of glory. He said, I'll baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. If there's no fire in your life, something's missing. But I'm telling you something, you come to the right place tonight because you're going to leave with fire. I promise you, you're going to leave with fire. Every part of your being is going to be born and burst in fire from your head to your toes. Fire, 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 fire. That's how I feel about it. See, you know what the option is? Here's the option. Here's the other side of the coin. Of the, you can have, we can have what we have here. Or you can have the other side of the coin and go to church and see some missionary coming in showing slides of starving children. And explaining to you on a chart how it's possible for uh, uh, Jonah to live in the belly of a well. Because I was at a service one time and the guy came in, showed slides of starving children and then he showed a slide of how it was possible for Jonah to live in a well. You can have that or you can have this. You can have a church to where the pastor avoids the book of Acts or you can have a church that is the book of Acts. You can have a church where there's no fire, or you can have a church to where the fire of God rains down, and you leave changed. Listen, I've been in churches, you know, by already by now. But first off, they had already left five minutes into what Pastor Mark was doing. <laughs> they had already left. I mean, you, I, can, I can see them right now. <gasps> well, by God, Ethel, let's get out of here, my God. <laughs> Then they go home, and you know what they do? Then they go home and sit at the couch and watch Who Wants to Be a Millionaire or vampire movies. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Church people, they don't, they, they don't want the supernatural, but yet they'll watch Harry Potter. No, I'm serious. Okay, so here's the bottom line. We are contending. We are contending for the 
supernatural. We're contending for the things of God. We're contending for the purpose of God. We're contending for the faith. We're contending for the fire. We're contending for the glory. And we all had nothing less, nothing else. If you don't want the fire, if you don't want the glory, I promise you, there are plenty of churches in San Diego that will accommodate you. If you want a nice, sweet little service, there's churches in this city that will accommodate you in that. But not the fellowship of a body and place. Not the fellowship of the unashamed. Oh! I know people, they come and say, man, he's just crazy. No, no, I don't care what they think. I, I'm just in love. I'm in love with Jesus because he is my Lord. I gave him my life, and I'll do whatever I have to do. I'll go wherever he wants me to go. I'll be whatever he wants me to be because I'm sold out to him. It's on his way. There's no other way. I can give a rip's butt about my way. That don't even, not a word. That's not even a word, is it, rip's butt? I meant to say rat's tail, but I can care less. <laughs> that's all in Kentucky. The, uh, uh, rips, uh, rips, butt. That, that's all right. We make up words. That'll be in the dictionary next week. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're contending. No, no, I'm, I'm telling you something. We're contending. We're contending for the things of God. We're on a quest and we'll not be satisfied. We'll not be satisfied. We'll not be satisfied. Satisfaction should not even be in your vocabulary. Satisfaction should not even be in your life. Because we never, when it comes to God, we never come to the place of satisfaction. Because the moment you come to the place where you're satisfied, you just get cut off. You just get cut off from all that he has. Because he doesn't come to satisfied people. He comes to people that are hungry. He comes to people that are thirsty. Amen. Amen. I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm about ready to run. I've been dancing. I've been dancing all day. I'm about ready to cross. I'm about ready to run. Oh, glory to God. Well, I tell you what. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's do this because then we're going to get into part two. Because I want to share something with you, and we're going to pray for everybody. And some things that the Lord wants to do. I know I've seen it in my spirit. Some things the Lord wants to do tonight. But so I want to do this now, because I don't want to do this at the end. So we're going to give you an opportunity to sow right now. We're going to give you an opportunity to sow a seed to worship God with your giving. And let me just say this to you. We also have, while you're preparing your offering, we also have some product. I forgot to mention it today, but we also have some product in the back. Two things I really want you to, to uh, seriously consider. My wife and I went into the studio, and uh, I, went, I, went through the, I went through the entire Word of God, and I, I took out all the Scriptures on blessing, all the Scriptures on prosperity, all the Scriptures. I was shocked. And I said, I said to my wife, well, you do this one. And I was shocked. Pastor Marcus, she went into the studio. We had, you know, CDs the last seven minutes or 70 minutes. We, we had, we, she's going through all the scriptures just on blessing, and we, we're, at, we're at CD number seven. You wouldn't believe the scriptures. I, I was like shocked. So I said, well, I don't want to have two, I don't want to have seven CDs, so let's just have two, Old Testament, New Testament. So we went into the studio, and so my wife recorded the uh, CD on all the scriptures on blessing. 
Then I went in the studio and did all the scriptures on, on healing from the Old Testament and New Testament. Then, next, when I get home, I'm going to go and do them all on the miracles in the Word of God. But now I say that because, listen, there is no excuse for the Word of God not to continually be pumped into us. There is no excuse with modern technology that the Word of God cannot, on a continual, regular basis, be constantly pumped into our spirit. Amen? Hallelujah. So, honey, why don't you just come here and this is, huh? Okay, I'll tell you what, this is my wife, this is somebody, we've, we, Brother um, Kelly, would you just go get me, there's, there's two tapes on the blessed life and then two on the redeemed life. And just bring those to me. I'm just waiting, just, just as people get ready to worship the Lord with their giving. Just raise your hand if you need an envelope. Raise your hand. How many have been blessed so far? Raise your hand. Usher, see all those hands? Get them on envelope now, quickly. <laughs> Come on now, we're, we're radical. Just bless, just bless the people. I want to take a picture. Well, you know, when you start reading the Word of God, you start getting full. And, and uh, Richard just kind of, I had, he did it me cold turkey. You know, he said, uh, he, he decided that night or that morning that I was going to go and read those scriptures, and I was going to go and, and do the New Testament, and then the Old Testament, and I was like, okay, all right. So I'm in there, and I'm reading, and, and, and if you read for three hours the Word of God, you start getting full. You start getting jacked up. Come on. And you're just like high octane. And so one of the scriptures was 7-Eleven. <laughs> and all I could think of was the store 7-Eleven. And I just wanted to burst out laughing. And another one of the scriptures was um, Philippines. But I said, <laughs> no, it was, <laughs> it was Phil in the book of Philipp <laughs> the book of Philippians. And I said, Filipino. And, <laughs> and we're trying to make it continuous so that there's no breaks because we got a piano player, right? So you got these streams. And if anybody knows about recording, you know, when you stop and you edit, it's a big deal because you're trying to splice it and try to get it so it all fits and so it's nice. But what's so awesome about these CDs is that um, the, in the recording studio, he had us go very slow. And as you listen to him, you say the Word of God with him. And it's powerful. And as you start speaking those words, because it's all the scriptures in the New Testament on prosperity. And it is so powerful. And it's in the King James. <laughs> You're feeling me, aren't you? <laughs> And so as you start in that Elizabeth English, you know, and, and there's like, you got to get a flow as you're speaking that. And so you say them as you go along, and it's beautiful. And the redeem, the one Richard did on healing, you just speak it. Because we need to hide God's word in our heart. Because when those trials come, what's going to come out of your mouth? That word, that divine word. Because, the, you know, Johnny says, I eat the word. It's like honey. Come on, we're going to eat that word. Amen. But the Lord gave me a scripture, and I'm going to share that scripture, and then we're going to go to part two. But I'm going to be faithful and, and do what the Lord said. And if you want to turn there, it's in Isaiah 43. Hallelujah. And we're just going to keep on flowing because these meetings are held by the unseen one, and he is walking up and down these aisles. And when we were worshiping the Lord, oh, my goodness. Whoo! As I was looking around, I could just see the anointing just falling on people. And you know what's so precious about that is that you are tapping in. You are bringing forth. You're stirring yourselves up. So often people don't know how to stir themselves up. But you have a pastor and his wife that are stirred themselves. And you can only produce 
after your kind. Amen. The fruit does not fall far from the tree. And when the spirit of God is moving and you get in, you know, like he was at the pool and he just wanted somebody to put him in. And, you know, it's like you get in that river and when you're worshiping him, it's powerful. But we're all to be stirred up. But, you know, a lot of times we go into churches and you have to do all the stirring because they don't know how to stir themselves up in their most holy faith. They don't know how to pray in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. They don't know how to make joyful melody unto the Lord. And we are his people and we are called. We are called. We are his chosen ones. Isaiah 43, we're going to, it's chapter 43. I'm going to just start at 10. It says, you are my my witnesses say I'm his witness says the Lord and my servant whom I have chosen that you may know me say know me believe me say believe me and remain steadfast to me and understand that I am he before me there was no God formed neither shall there be after me I even I am the Lord and besides me there is no Savior I have declared the future and have saved the nation in times of danger and I have shown that I am God when there was no strange and alien God among you therefore you are my witnesses says the Lord that I am God. We are his witness and we are his chosen, but we must know him. We must know his ways. When the water is moving and the river is flowing and we are in in deep worship, you must know his ways. He, his ways are higher than our ways, but we must know him his ways of doing things. We must hook up with heaven and bring that forth in the realm that we are living in. And what we are doing, we've got to capture that and bring it. We've got to see it by the Spirit of God and bring it into the natural. But we must know him, not know about him. I know my husband intimately. I know what he likes. I know what he doesn't like. I know what he likes to eat. I know what he doesn't like to eat. I've lived with the man for 26 years. Can you hear me? Come on. Some of you, you know people. And God wants us to know him. And when we know him, we're going to act different. We're going to talk different. We're going to look different. We are different because we know him. We don't know about him. We know him intimately, and he knows us. He knows us. But it also says that we have to believe. We have to believe. And when you have the no on something, then you can believe. But God wants us to believe. He's putting that in there so that we can know him, believe him, and be steadfast for his coming. He is waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. He says, will I find faith on the earth when I return? He's looking He's looking, he's looking, he's looking. He says, seek me and you shall find me. You see, there are many realms of the Spirit of God. And as a traveling evangelist and gone to over 500 churches, we go to many places. They know of God, but when you hit a place, a sweet spot of God, you know, golfers know that on that club that there's a sweet spot. And when you hit a sweet spot, things happen. And when you, as an evangelist, you're traveling and you hit a sweet spot, things that are tucked away, that are hidden, that are sometimes hidden for such a time as this, God starts revealing himself. God starts sharing his secrets 
don't you want to know the secrets of God? God said that he's hidden his treasure in earthen vessels. You are treasures to the Lord. You have hidden treasure on the inside of you. And the hour is coming that we're coming out of the cleft of the rock, and the gifts of God are going to come forth. And we're going to see it in this life. We're going to see it in the church. We're going to see it in America. We don't have to go abroad. We're going to have the hunger in America because he's hidden it in earthen vessels. And you stand to attention when the Spirit of God is moving and riches are start to flow out of your mouth because they're in there, but they're not for everyone. Amen? Therefore, a pointed time. So just know that you are the evidence that Jesus was on the earth, that Jesus is coming. You are the witness. Amen? So let your light shine. Amen? Hallelujah. See, understand, when you walk with him, there's, there's no need. Understand, when you walk with him, if you need water, I said, understand, when you walk with God, if you need water, all you need is a rock in the backyard. <laughs> no, I'm serious. You smite it and water will come out. What I'm saying, he is more than enough, ladies and gentlemen. He is God. And he said something to us here, in, and I'm just going dis- to be just a, f- a few moments, and I'm going to pray. Jesus, because I know what the Lord wants to do tonight. And I I have to share this with you just from the book of Jeremiah. So if you go with me in Jeremiah chapter 29. Because let me tell you something. This is a place of preparation. Abiding place is a place of preparation, but it's also... I hear in the Spirit that this, that this place is a launching pad where individuals are launched forth. But understand, when you're launched, you're not launched empty. You're launched because you know Him, you've been with Him, there's been downloads of the Holy Ghost, there's been a baptism of fire. And there's been an impartation of heaven imparted unto you. Therefore, when you are launched forth, you go forth in glory and power and demonstration. For the gospel is not in word only, but it's in power and demonstration. For just to have the word preached is half the gospel. Because Jesus didn't just preach the word. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 9, the Bible says that he went about all the cities and all the villages preaching or teaching teaching and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Jesus always, everywhere he went, he taught, he preached, and he demonstrated. 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 Even when he went into his own hometown and they were full of doubt and unbelief, you keep reading, what did he do? He stayed around and he went about teaching. He went about teaching. Why? To get faith in him. Even in the people, even there, the Bible says still, even though there was doubt and unbelief, there were still a few that had some faith because the Bible says that he did lay hands on a few, that he did uh, heal. There was a few that were healed of minor ailments, but they were healed. It don't matter. I mean, if you have a toothache, I mean, to get healed of a toothache, yeah, you rejoice. Amen. I mean, does uh, listen, understand pain, pain. But you look at the life of the ministry of Jesus, and that's what he did. And every city and every town he went into, he would. The first thing that he would do was announce that he's anointed. He immediately, the first thing that he would do was to draw attention to the anointing. See, we get this, we get oftentimes, some people in the church get this false humility. Think, well, you know, I don't want to brag and don't want to just, no, 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 he wants you to brag. Because when you brag of what he just did, you're bragging on him and you are showing forth his glory. 
That's why you have a testimony. Tell if somebody. Well, listen, what the Lord's done for you this week, what the Lord's done for you today, what He's done for you tonight, tell somebody what He's done. Bring Him glory. Amen? You know, I always thought that. that because, you know, the Bible says that Jesus, that, that, that when He opened up the book of Isaiah, that the first thing He began to do is announce that the Spirit of the Lord was upon Him. The Spirit of the Lord is upon him. Something very interesting, I'll just throw this in. When I, one of the times I remember when my mentor, Dr. Kenneth E. Hagan, when he, when, when one of the times Jesus appeared to him, Jesus said to him, he said, the first thing I would do, every city and every village I went into, the first thing I would do was announce that the anointing is upon me. He drew attention to the anointing. Understand, that same anointing is here. That same anointing is here. The very thing Paul walked in, we walk in. The very thing that Peter had, we have. In Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 13. And you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. Notice what he said here. The Spirit of God speaking through Jeremiah said to us, if we seek him, here's the promise, we would find him. If we seek him, we would find him. If we seek him, we would find him when we search for him with all of our hearts. Understand, God wants you to come after Him. God wants you to seek Him. God wants you to come after Him with everything, every fiber of your being. He wants you to seek Him. He wants you to come after Him. And He promised us. He said, if we seek Him, We'd find him. One translation says, if we seek him, he'd give us the privilege of finding him. Think about this for a moment. God, the one we've been talking about, our Father, the God that's more than enough, El Shaddai, he has said to you and I, if you will just seek me and search for me with all of your heart, I will allow you to find me. Renee, isn't it? Sister Renee told me today, you know, she, she came, the power of God touched her today. She said she went out onto the power for the first time and began to speak in tongues. She said to me, she said, for the last two weeks she'd been seeking. The last two been going to the beach. Isn't that right? Been go Every morning been going to the beach crying out to him. Let me tell you something. She sought him. And guess what? She found him. Because God promised us if we'd seek him, if we'd seek him and search for him with all of our heart, we'd find him. No, no, I, I, I don't, I, I, know, I know when I say that to some people, that it just goes over them. But understand, I take this very seriously. I mean, I take, I mean, my father, he said to me, Richard, if you seek me and search for me with all of your heart, you'll find me. And I tell you, I've been on a quest for many years, since I was 17 years old, I've been on a quest. And there was many quests that I've been on. But I can tell you right now, you're looking at one very, very, very hungry preacher. I'm telling you, I am a hungry preacher. My confession is I'm the hungriest preacher there is because God told me if I'm hungry for him and I seek him, that he's going to allow me to find him. And I'm telling you, I am on a quest and I'm about ready to get on another one. Matter of fact, I said to my wife today, when we get home, I'm cutting the TV off. I'm cutting the I'm cable off I, because I don't want there to be any distraction in my life because I'm going to give myself into some things. I'm going to give myself unto him. I'm going to cry out to him and I'm going to seek him and I'm going to search for him because I know I see some things. Oh, And I know like I told you earlier that if there's something and if there's a realm you want to walk in and there's a place you want to go in God there's something required of you. 
I'm not saying that TV's wrong or bad. I'm just saying for me, I want no distractions because I'm going on a quest and I don't want anything there in my home that's going to cause me to get out of this. And it's going to stop me from Any nothing that's going to stop me from Oh Father I worship you I'm so hungry for you I'm so thirsty for you I seek you Because there's realms of God that are available and as Pastor Mark and I was talking yesterday, I refuse to get to heaven and have Thomas come to me and say, Richard, when I was on earth, I did more for the kingdom of God than you did. That shall not happen. I'm not even going to let Peter say it. Because Peter, Peter didn't have in his hand like we do the word of God. How much more should we be doing anyway? Well, you're just talking like you're just radical and you just throw it out. There's no other way to live. No, there's no other way to live. If he can come and do what he did in, for me, then I can surely give him everything. The problem with most people is that they won't seek him because, first off, they don't love him. Because if you're in love with him, you'll seek him. I promise you, if you're in love with him, you'll seek him. If you're hungry for him, you'll seek him. I go to churches. Listen, I live in church. I live in church. That's why I gotta, I'm, around, I'm around religious people all the time. That's why I got to dye my hair because it's white. I do. I had to dye it. I don't want white hair. I'm around religious people all the time. Bunch of devils. My beard's gray. I'm a young man. I'm still, I'm not 50 yet. I don't turn 50 till July. <laughs> I'm not there yet. But who cares? It's just a number anyway. But I don't care. It means nothing to me. But I mean, you got to get a deal with the religious people. I'm serious. I have people, I've had people come and leave my meetings because people were falling backwards and not forwards because of the New Testament, they're supposed to fall forwards. I'm like, What? What? I said to one guy, did you just come back from Colorado and get some on that wacky weed? What are you talking about? <laughs> stupid, st st stupid. You want to sit and argue and leave this meeting because people are supposed to fall forward? That's the dumbest thing. I mean, listen. Now the Kentucky wants to come out of me to, to call him. Listen, to call, to call that person stupid is to be an insult to stupid people. I mean, what are you talking about? You're going to leave because, I mean, last time I read the New Testament, when they came to get Jesus, the Bible says they fell backwards. Who cares? In our meetings, they fall forwards, they fall backwards, they drop, they run, they swim, they fly, whatever. <laughs> I mean, that's, but I'm telling you, you got to, you know, people think religion is just some certain, you know, denomination. But there's religion with, amongst charismatic Pentecostal people, some of the most religious ones. And they say they're hungry for God, but they're not hungry. They kind of just talk. They just talk, 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 talk. I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Well, don't tell me you're hungry. Show me you're hungry. Because hunger's an action. And it never fails. People come and tell me, I'm so hungry for God. I've been waiting for these people. Ooh, I'm going to be here after service. I know right away they won't be. You know what? They aren't. Because it's just talk. Hunger's an action. Hunger's an action. So hunger's an action. Don't tell me you're hungry. Show me. Because I'm promise you right now, God sees it. God sees that you seek him. Because he said, if you seek me and search for me, you'll find me. God sees that you see. Listen, God sees that people talk. And he sees that people seek. And he sees that people search. And he sees that people come after him. He's everything. There's nothing else. Amen. People want to squabble over silly things. I had a person leave my meeting one time mad and, and told the pastor, I'm never coming back to this service anymore, to this church anymore, as long as this preacher's there. And the pastor's like, well, what, what did he do? And he's trying to think in his head, what did I say or do that would make her 
upset and he couldn't think of anything. And he said, well, why are you so mad, sister? She said to him, she said, I'll tell you something right now. I'm never coming back as long as he's here because there's just too much joy in this place. <laughs> my mouth went, There's too much. She's leaving because there's too much joy. So you know, the next night, I said to the church, I said, people, I said, you know what? We want to accommodate everybody. You know, there was a lady last night. She left because there's too much joy here. So you know what? So tonight, I'm letting you know in advance, tonight's going to be a special night of depression. <laughs> no, I mean, come I mean, here. What? what, what? So he said, if you seek me, you'll find me. But you know what? People don't read the next verse. Because the next part of the verse is what happened when I stood in front of that lady at the counter to rent that car. See, the next part of the verse, the first part of verse 14, people don't read that part, but look what the first part of verse 14 says. He says, and I will be found of you. So you can read it this way. And you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart, and I will be found of you, saith the Lord. I will be found of you. Yeah, what does that mean? That means everywhere you go, God's found there. Everywhere you go, every room you go into, every building you go into, every new place you go into, God is found there. When you have an encounter with God, everywhere you go, He's found. And it's time, and it's happening now, in these days, and in this hour, the church, the glorious church of the Lord Jesus Christ, the most powerful force on the earth. There is nothing that can withstand us. There is nothing that can stop us. Because our chief commander is the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church. And he has clothed us. And we are clothed in his glory. He has imparted himself on the inside of us. The very one that raised him from the dead lives on the inside of us. And he has given us his name. And he said to us, he said, everywhere you go, preach the gospel. Those that believe shall be saved. He said, I'll give you authority over every demonic power, all over all demons. You matter of fact, you'll tread on them. You'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Yes, amen. Signs and wonders should follow every single believer. Yes. Yes, signs and wonders shall follow every single believer. Every single one of you that is here tonight that has called on the name of the Lord Jesus, that has made him the Lord of your life, signs and wonders and miracles should be following you. It's time that people stop making excuses for it. Well, you know, no, no more excuses. It's time that we are totally sold out. It's time that it's God and it's nothing else. It's Him and it's nothing else. No more. Sata for a few seconds. We have to understand the hour and the urgency of the hour. And we have to be eternally minded. We have to be heavenly minded. Everything you do, you have to do in the light of eternity. Every decision you make, you have to make in the light of eternity. Don't you do anything just because you think it's a good idea. You do everything in the light of eternity. You have to ask yourself every decision you make, every move you make, you ask yourself, how is this going to affect my eternity? Don't you dare take a, another job because it's a great big promotion and there's no church that's full of the Holy Ghost on fire church there. Don't you dare sell out for money. You better go there and you better make sure that there's a church that's on fire. 
You better go there and make sure that there's a place that you're going to be fed and you're going to get the Word of God and they've got the mind of God, that they have the heart of God and they're not ashamed of Him. And if there's not a place like that, you better not take that promotion. Because eternity is at stake. Everything we do, we do in the light of eternity. My mentor, Dr. Kennedy Egan, always said every decision you do, every decision you make, you make it in the light of eternity. How is this going to affect my eternity? I remember when I was associate pastor, I said to, I said to this couple, they, because they was moving and, and, and they was going to get this job. Actually, I wasn't associate pastor, it was some other time, but I said to this couple, because they was moving, and I, I said, was there a good church there in the city? Well, there's no church there. Please do not, please do not tell me, well, I go to church on the internet. That's not church. That's called backslidden. I'm serious. I got a church on the internet. You're backslid. Bottom line. We don't pull punches. Come on. I said, don't go. Well, but I'm going to be able to, first time, we're going to be able to, we're going to be able to get a boat for our family and we're going to be able to do all the things our family wants to do. I said, but there's no church there. Don't just, don't, don't, get out of your carnal mind. Uh, Let's see the big picture. There's no church there. You won't serve him. You will stop serving him. Your kids won't serve him. Oh, well, we've been in, we've been in this church. No, No, don't. You're making a mistake. Three years later, the man's divorced. His son has been in major trouble on drugs, and his teenage daughter is pregnant. He's divorced. But he had a boat. You never do anything without asking yourself, how is this going to affect my eternity? Everything we do in the light of eternity we don't listen, understand something. We're not of this world. We're just passing through. Understand something. We're not of this world. We live in it, but we're just passing through. And as we pass through this life in this world, we're to glorify God in everything. And we're to be about His business. We'll be about His command. And we're to bring as many people with us. It's all about eternity. No, listen to me. It's all about eternity. Don't you ever do anything because there's more money. Because now you're making money, you're God. I usually get that response, but it's the truth. See, people, I, you know, pe- people, oh, I just need more money. No, oh my God, no. Because I promise you one thing. I'm, I'm dealing with the situation right now. A guy... And yet, and he, he, he make lots of money, hundreds of thousands of dollars a week, literally. But you know what? Because they wasn't some, there was no revival that took place. There was no fire that burned on the inside of him. There wasn't really that, that commitment to Jesus. Who cares they wear a cross around their neck? And that's American, you know, I wear a cross. What? Who cares? Have you taken up your cross? Right. And guess what? The money came, and that money revealed all the stuff that was in his heart. Now I just pray for him every day just that he makes heaven. Did you ever do anything for money? Amen? Amen. We seek him in everything. Amen. We seek him in everything. No, we seek Him in everything. It's no longer, this life I live is no longer the life I live. It's the life that He lives in me. Amen? Amen. It's no longer I that lives, but it's Christ that lives on the inside of me. Amen? Amen. We have to be eternity-minded. Everything has to be eternity-minded. As I'll say it again, because it's very important, ask yourself, How's this going to affect my eternity? Because it's all about eternity. Jesus, amen.
I remember my grandmother. I remember when she, when she had her stroke and they took her off life support. She gave her life to the Lord Jesus, and I even prayed for her. But another time, she gave her life to the Lord Jesus. I know she's saved. I remember I said to a family member, I said, I said, just, just let Memo go ahead and die. Go home. Oh, my God. I, I, you, you'd have thought I was bells above himself. <laughs> you never would believe the response I got. I thought he was going to smack me. I mean, uh, I, but I just, I, and that dawned on me. No, these people aren't, they're not saved. They say they are, but they're not, they, they, don't, they don't think like I think. They're not eternally minded like I am. And they just like, how dare you say that? But I'm like, she's, I mean, she's 85. She's had a stroke, and they, they've taken her off. Like, just let her go. Well, why keep her all? Just let her go home. Let me go home with Jesus. Be with Jesus. And I, they did, I couldn't even talk about it anymore. But you know, one night in the hospital room, they were all out. I came up to my grandmother, and I got into her ear. I called her memo. I said, memo, I said, this is Ricky. Your favorite grandson. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> I was the firstborn. I was the favorite. I said, Memo, this is Ricky. I said, Memo, don't let your, gla- your grave clothes hold you anymore. Go ahead and go home and be with Jesus. I grabbed her by the hand. I said, Memo, go home. Be with Jesus. That's what I said to her. And I promise you, and I did say this. And I said, Memo, I said, when you get to heaven and you see Jesus, tell him I need billions of dollars. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I mean, get every word in you can. I mean, get all the help you can. Uh, come on. I, I just don't want, I mean, she's going to be there in person. I mean, come on. I wanted her to stand. My grandson needs billions for the gospel. Come on now. But I remember even at, even at her funeral, I, I just, I couldn't, all the family's weeping, I'm laughing. No, I'm serious. Because I know she's with Jesus. She's in glory. Now later, I'm like, I, could, I, actually, I actually tried to get fleshly and, and cry, and I couldn't. I, honestly, I tried to cry. I couldn't. All I can do is, I'm smiling. All I can do is this. And then, and then, the, and then, the, the, then they, the, the pastor, he, uh, I, I said to the pastor, I said, I said, now look, to her pastor, I said, give an altar call. Because you're going to have a captive audience today. Nobody's going to get up and leave. Give an altar call. Tell them about Jesus and give them an opportunity to accept Jesus. Wow, you know, that, that's a good idea. <laughs> I, 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 I left. Second. Then he said, well, then he, then he said, well you, you help do the service. Oh, okay, and I, I, I said, I will. So then I said, well, you know, you give an altar call because he was doing it last. So I went to the bathroom. I walk out of the bathroom. He is a, a Christian church. I walk out of the bathroom, and he's waiting for me. And he says, you know, I think you need to give an altar call today. He wouldn't even give an altar call. I said, fine. And I did. And I did. I, I, when it was my turn, I got up and I told him. I said, I want every one of you to look at Memo right now. I said, she's not there. <laughs> I'm serious. They look like, oh, my God. I don't know if I want to call him family or not. No, he's not there. She's not there. That's just her, that's just, and that, that was just her earthly suit. That's going back to the dust. Then I said this. The day's coming. Every single one of you is going to be right there. No, I'm serious. Isn't it amazing how people treat funerals anyway? I mean, it's like... I mean, here's a guy. I mean, he never wore a suit in a day in his life. Why you got him in a suit? I mean, think about it. I mean, they treat, you know, death as some, I mean, oh, they want to try to, 
I mean, it's just, it, it's mind-boggling. I just see it differently. I, I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait to that day. Anyway, I don't want to spend time on that, but I mean, I'm thinking, I mean, I mean, here, you got all these people. I mean, he didn't, I mean, he's got all these people. I'm thinking, that he's got all these people. He didn't even like you people. <laughs> he didn't even like you. He didn't even, when you got him in a suit, he didn't even wear a suit. He never owned a suit. He had to go buy him a suit. Anyway, I'm, but my point I'm making is that we as Christians, we see, we see for us, death is a glorious thing. Because we're just passing through this life. We are just passing through. But as we pass through, we're to take as many people as we can with us, and we're to proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are to never compromise anything. We're to be bold. We're to be radical. And we're to be baptized in the fire of the Holy Ghost. And everywhere we go, Verse 14 is manifested, and God is found there. Amen? Amen. Amen. I tell you, when I get to heaven, there's, I mean, apart from Jesus, there's three people I want to meet. I can't wait to meet them. <laughs> the woman with issue of blood, blind Bartimaeus, and in Luke 5, the paralyzed man who was let down from the roof. Because if you really want to know what hunger is, see, understand something. When you're hungry for God, seeking God, it's not just being hungry for God when it's comfortable for you. It's not just seeking God at your convenience when it's just comfortable for you. No, no, no. When you seek Him, you get on a quest, and you forsake everything. You forsake everything and you come after him with everything. You cry out to him in the day and in the night. I'm so hungry for you, Lord. I'm so hungry. No, you seek him. But he promised us we'd find him. And let me tell you something. I promise you when you get on a quest, when you get to the place to where you are going to come after him with everything, I'm going to tell you right now, there are going to be people that's going to call you names, and they're going to call you flaky. They're going to call you just radical. They're going to call you extreme. They're going to call you just overboard with a religious fanatic. They're going to call you everything, but who cares? Who cares? They just can't see what you see. They're not after what you're after. And they're going to try to discourage you, and they're going to try to stop you. I mean, even coming to this church. I mean, if some of the people, listen, if some of your family members realize the church you go to. I mean, understand, just because you speak in tongues, they already think you're crazy. Now, others you come to a body place, oh. you just come amongst your own. Hello. But I mean, you look, you look at these three individuals. Blind Bartimaeus, first off. You know, blind, you know, blind Bartimaeus in Mark chapter 10. Blind Bar, you know, blind Bartimaeus, he was a blind man. And he... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got it. And, uh, you know, he was a blind man. He couldn't see Jesus was coming, but he heard it. He heard Jesus was coming. We couldn't see it. But guess what he began to do? Jesus! It's called seeking him. It's called seeking him. It's called being hungry. It's called going after it. See, there comes a time to where you stop praying and you just go after it. You just do it. Because understand, seeking him is going after it. Jesus! That's how the David have mercy on me. Jesus, the Son of David, have mercy on me. I just, whoo, I just got a download from heaven. I tell you, God's going to, I mean, tonight, the fire of God is going to shake you, youth. I'm telling you, the youth here tonight. I don't care if you got to get a boat and go to school. That means nothing. The things of God mean way more than school. Jesus, the Son of David, have mercy on me. Guess what happened? 
Blind Bartimaeus, be quiet. They came and told him, shut up. Be quiet. Most Christians, you know what they do? Oh, okay. That's not what Blind Bartimaeus did. Because you know what? There was something greater on the inside of him. Oh, listen to me. There's something greater on the inside of him that would not succumb to the religious individuals that try to stop him. There was something greater in here. It's called hunger. It's called thirst and for him. Nothing can stop the most dangerous man there is. The most dangerous woman there is. Somebody that's hungry for God. And God always 100% of the time accommodates you. What did blind Barnabas do? Baba says he cried out even louder. Jesus! This time, Jesus stopped. And Jesus called him. He said, tell him to come. Now those that were telling him to be quiet, now they become his friend. Oh, by and by, if good cheer, the master calling thee. <laughs> well, wait a minute. You just tell me, shut up a moment ago. <laughs> just like the Peter says, like those that have come, you know, and come to a body and place, and, you know, oh, my God, they've moved so many times, and oh, the pastor's so radical. <laughs> And he has these, these, guys, these crazy evangelists in, and they just, they just don't even know what time means. <laughs> and I'm like, listen, let me tell you something. When you go to a body place church, you just better just hit the record button. Because <laughs> you're not going to be able to see that show. So TiVo it, or record it. Just trust me, you're going to be there all night. But then all of a sudden, the fulfillment of the promise that he spoke 12 years ago is manifested. And all of a sudden now, they want to be like blind Bartimaeus' acquaintances, and they want to come back. And they'll come back. They'll come, they'll come back. Oh, Pastor Mark, <laughs> we've been with you the whole time. You know, we just had to take a little detour. But you know what? We've been with you the whole time. We might not have been there in flesh, but we've been there. Now they're going to be spiritual. We've been there in the spirit. <laughs> and I know Pastor Mark is as radical as he is. I'm sure I can see him saying, yeah, isn't it funny, but your spirit never paid tithes. <laughs> Your spirit never honored the Lord with your money. <laughs> no, but that's what people do. But guess what? Jesus called him. Think about this. Think about this. The hunger in blind Bartimaeus caused the Lord of glory, the one who spoke and the worlds were formed, the one who spoke and stars were created, the one who formed the heavens and the earth and filled the sea with all that's in it. Blind Bartimaeus caused him to stand still and call him. What am I saying? Understand how important and how powerful hunger for God is. Because he wants you to come after him. He said, if you just come after me, if you just seek me, I'm going to let you find me. We can look at blind, we can look at the woman with issue of blood too. 
You know, the Bible says in Mark chapter 5, there was a woman who had an issue of blood 12 years, suffered many things, and many physicians spent all that she had with nothing better, rather grew worse, but she heard of Jesus. When she heard, came behind the press and touched his garment, she just said, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And immediately, the Bible says, immediately that, that disease left her. Immediately that disease left her, and she felt in her body she was healed of that plague. Jesus turned around and said to the press, who touched my clothes? And the disciples said unto him, Master, thou seest the multitude throng in thee. How do we know who touched you? Jesus said, somebody touched me. But the Bible says, but the woman, for, but because I felt virtue go out of me. And the Bible says, but the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him, told him all the truth. Jesus said unto her daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go and be and be healed of thy plague. But let me tell you something. She had to go through hell to get to her miracle. But there was something greater than everything she faced. Because she was to be, by law, she was to be stoned on the spot. If she came into the city and she's walking and, and Jesus is walking with Jairus, who's a ruler of the synagogue, who could have had her stoned. She lost everything. There was nothing else she had. There was no more money. There was nothing else. But yet there was something greater on the inside of her than anything in the natural she was facing. She was even greater than her disease that was taking her life. And it's called Faith. It's called hunger. There was nothing that was going to stop this lady from touching his garment. Because she said, if I may be touching, I shall be made whole. Understand how powerful hunger is. That's why God said, come after me. Come after me. I want you to seek me. Because I want to show you who I am. Come after me. Because I want you to know me. Come after me. Come after me. And if you do, I'll let you find me. The paralyzed man in Luke 5. The Bible says Jesus was there. All the religious leaders were there. The Pharisees were there. The rulers of the law were there. And Jesus was teaching. And the Bible says in verse 17 of Luke chapter 5 that the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Isn't it amazing that the very ones the power of the Lord was present to heal didn't get anything. But the one who got the miracle was the one who was on the outside who couldn't get in because it was full of the preachers. He could not get in. So he had to do radical understand something when you listen to me when you're hungry for God when you're hungry for him and you seek him with everything you will irritate satisfied people when you're on fire you will irritate those that are not when you're hungry for him you will irritate those that are not Hello? And here's this man had to be carried everywhere. Obviously, he had friends that were full of faith like him. Obviously, he had friends that loved him. That's why you need a place like this. That's why, listen, don't fellowship with people of doubt and unbelief. Drop them like a hot iron from your life. Especially in the hour that we're in now. You don't need doubters in your life. You don't need people that are lukewarm in your life. You don't need people that want to experience the things of the world in your life. You don't want anybody in your life that wants what the world has. Drop them like a hot iron and have nothing to do with them. Amen. Amen. Because God forbid you become like them. God forbid that the world calls you friend. Because if they call you friend, that means they see you like they see themselves. Amen. Amen. Cut, off all, cut off everything in your life that would keep you from coming after him. Cut off everything in your life that would keep you from seeking Him. Cut off everything in your life that would keep you from coming after God. I don't care if it's somebody you think you want to marry. If they don't want to come after Him like you do, they're not the one for you. Play games. Because there's a whole lot more out there that God can bring your way that's got the same heart that you got. 
Amen. Amen. I remember I told <laughs> my daughter's in Bible school. She's 19 years old. I prayed to Pastor Mark and, and the day she preached on she preached at the Bible school. But I told her, I preached there not long ago, and I told them, I told the boys at the Bible school, like 300 of them, had my daughter stand up, which she hates. And I had her stand up. I said, this is my daughter. I said, she doesn't have a boyfriend. She isn't looking either. I'm serious. My wife is there. She'll tell you. My daughter let me have it too when we got in the car. But I didn't care. I said, she doesn't have a boyfriend, and she's not looking. So you boys, don't even come around. I tell you right now, I'm not afraid to go back to jail. <laughs> I'm serious. And I ask you every once in a while, anybody ever come and, you know, talk to you? And, no, Daddy. <laughs> Good. Because <laughs> I'm guarding her. I spoke to her when she was a baby. And up until, up until she was teenage years, every night I told her, you're going to serve him. You're going to serve him with all your heart. You're not going to know the ways of the world. You're not going to know unrighteousness. You're only going to know God. You're only going to know his ways. And all of your days, you're going to have a heart that seeks after him. All of your days, you're going to have a heart that only wants what he wants. Amen. See, because I'm going to tell you right now. What are you going to do when you're walking down the road and all of a sudden the gift of faith drops on the inside of you? And you stand in front of that lame man that's begging. And all of a sudden, you say to him, silver and gold I have not, but I got something on the inside of me that my father just dropped in me. And it's for you because what you're after is money and it's only going to satisfy you for the rest of the day. The morning when you wake up, you're going to need to be sitting there begging again. But oh, what I got for you comes from heaven and it'll change your life. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And you reach down and you grab them. And you pull them out. And the power of God hits the legs of that individual. And they start dancing. With you. And then they come and they haul you off to jail. And they tell you, you can preach if you want, but just don't preach in the name. I feel it tonight. Ha! When they come and tell you, you can say things, but just don't preach in the name. Don't mention that name. And I know you. You're going to say, not me. And they let you out. you got to have a place that you can come to. That's why the internet's not your church. Give me a break. You gotta have a company of your own that you can go to and report all that the chief priests and elders and the authorities have said to you. Because one thing's for sure in a body place, there is no such thing as retreating. Because Christians, true Christians, baptizing the Holy Ghost who are dead unto themselves but alive unto him, do not retreat. Amen. You know what we do? We go to our own and we begin to bombard heaven and we don't ask for him to spare us and to get us out and to take us to somewhere easy. No, we cry out, Father, in the name of Jesus, grant unto all your servants boldness. 
that signs and wonders and miracles shall be done because there's no retreating. There's no backing down. There's no bow on our knee. Hello? And then all of a sudden, the place is shaking and the fire of God falls in your field again. Ready to go back at it. Amen. Amen. See, you come after him with everything. And that's what the man did. He had his friends. They wouldn't let him in. They wouldn't let him in. But I'm going to tell you something. Hungry people are radical people. They wouldn't let him in. But you know what? He wasn't going to take no for an answer. Don't you ever take no for an answer. Don't you ever take no for an answer. We're the church. Understand who you are. You're the church. You're the church of the living God. You are the glorious church. You are the body of Christ. You are the most powerful force there is on this earth. There's nothing that can stop you or withstand you. Don't take no for an answer. Amen? Because understand me. Understand something. He's already gone before you. So why do you want to stop? He's already gone before you making it to happen. Bring it to pass. Why do you want to stop and go the other way when he's already gone to make it happen? Right. Amen. What did he do? I'm not going to come back. Get it today. No, he's a now God. My miracle's now. Now. Well, what do you want us to do? I can see his friends. Well, what do you want us to do? We're going to get in there. Okay. But how are we going to get in there? They've already banned you. Well, I'm going to tell you something. The power of God's in there, and it's present to heal. The power of God's present to heal in there, and I need a miracle. And I'm going to get my miracle today. I'm getting my miracle. You're seeing hunger right now. You're seeing what hunger really is. Hunger goes after it. Hunger doesn't take no for an answer. Hunger don't stop. Hunger seeks until it finds. Here's what we're doing. Take me up on top of the roof. And we're going to take away the roof until there's a big enough hole to let me down. Now think about it. He couldn't do it on his own. He's paralyzed. He had to have friends that was just as radical as him. And he had to have friends that were willing to pay the price with him, that were willing to go up and to get him to the place where we can get his miracle. Oh, come on, church. That's why you can't be by yourself. You can't be. That's why. Get away all the religion. Get away all the doubt. Get away all the, the people who want to ride the fence. Out of your life. Say hasta la vista. Amen. And guess what happened? He went up on top. Revival broke out. And began, see, I'm saying, tell you something. Their, their hunger was radical because they took away the roof. Can you, imagine, can you imagine the people in there, the religious people that were in there? Here they are trying to find fault with Jesus because you know that's what they were doing because that's all they tried to do. But I actually see the mercy of God in that whole picture there. And, and I talk to people. Most people don't see it. But I see the mercy of God there because understand something. The religious people were there. The Pharisees, the doctors of the law were there. The ones that couldn't stand Jesus was there. But I also, also understand something. The power of the Lord was there to heal. Understand something. When the healing anointing of God is present, it's present because there's people there that's sick. Well, who was there? The religious people, the leaders, the 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 the, 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 the Religious people, they were all there. The doctors of the law were there. So in order for the healing power to be present, that tells me that some of those religious leaders that were there had to be sick. And yet, here they're there trying to fault, find, find fault with Jesus so they can have him put to death, but yet God in his goodness and his mercy. Do you see? God in his goodness and God in his mercy, yet even though they was there trying to find fault with Jesus in his mercy and in his love and his goodness, still wanted to heal him.
Because understand something, when the power of God's present, it's present for a purpose. When the, when the healing anointing of God comes in, it comes for a purpose. Because there's people in the presence, there's people in the house that are sick. But I understand something. Guess who got something? The one that was radical, the one that was hungry, the one that took away the roof. And just imagine, as Jesus was there teaching, and the religious people were there. Next thing you know, dust starts falling down on them, and they're... Next thing you know, there's a sunroof. <laughs> there's a sunroof right in the middle of the building. And there's men around it talking. Let him down. So you, all hear the, you can hear the man, let me down. I'm getting my miracle. Oh, I know it. I know. He wasn't there. Listen, this man wasn't religious at all. He wasn't there. Hmm, let me down. Hmm, and get my miracle. Hmm. No, no. Let me down. I'm getting my miracle. My miracle's in there. Let me down. I can't wait any longer. Let me down. You know he was. I would be doing that. Mom, it's right there. It is right there. <laughs> See, Pastor, this Pastor, we, we're not going to have any problem in China when they want us to preach for 12 hours. There ain't going to be no problem. Matter of fact, we're going we're gonna to pretend like we're in China now and you're going to be Chinese. We're going we're gonna to tag team. I'm about done. I'm going to tag team, Pastor. Oh, Pope for us. Oh, egg roll. Oh. Bad advantage. Bad. <laughs> You know what? I can tell you are hungry. I can tell that you are hungry because I haven't seen one person tonight do this yet. Because <laughs> there's more somebody was in the back who didn't know like that. It's probably like that. <laughs> I mean, he's right there. I promise you. He wasn't just like nice and calm. I mean, you should have saw me today in, in the hotel room as Kentucky is putting a whipping on Michigan. It's basketball. You should have heard me in my room. I, I, listen, I wasn't, I wasn't just, just, you know, doing the nice religious, <gasps> yay. <laughs> no, not me. I was like, ah, yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> and I'm that way with just natural things, but oh, when it comes to heavenly things, when it comes to my Lord, oh, you ain't seen anything. And I promise you, I I promise you, the man wasn't just nice. Let me down so I can get my miracle. No, let me down. I'm getting my miracle right now. I know he was. Listen, when we get to heaven, I'm gonna have the Lord pray to play the DVD, and I promise you, you'll see that's what he was doing. But you know what? He got down, and Jesus. First thing Jesus said to him, your sins are forgiven. It tells me that it's what he was conscious of. And the Bible says that there were strange and unusual and unthinkable things that happened that day. And he walked home. He didn't carry his bed or he wasn't carried on his bed, he walked home. Let me ask you a question. Do you think if he was satisfied, he would have received a miracle? No, because satisfaction would have said, okay, when they said to him, there's no more room here. Satisfaction would have said, oh, okay, well, I'm on his mailing list, and he's going to be back in town in about three, four months. I'll come back then a little early. That's what satisfaction says. 
But hunger says, no, I'm getting in there. And whatever I have to do, I don't care how radical and how violent I have to. I don't care if my actions cause me to spend a year in jail. I don't care, but I'm getting my miracle. And that's what he did. But he, guess what? He walked home. See, understand how powerful hunger is. The most dangerous person there is is a person that's hungry and a person that's thirsty. Amen? Amen. And I'll tell you this, and I'm going to pray because it's time. When the Lord touched me in 1990, it's because my wife and I, we traveled all over the country in a little Ford Tempo, 1988, 1989, from Kentucky to California to Oregon to Rhode Island to Florida to Texas to Oklahoma, all over the country. And I'm driving, we're driving a 1988 Ford Tempo. Didn't even have cruise control. I couldn't even put the seats back because it's full of suitcases. Only one of them was mine. <laughs> Notice I said that here to you, Elizabeth. <laughs> I didn't say it, but I heard. But I cried out, oh God, I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry for you. I'm so hungry for you. I'd go, I'd drive for hours. The longest we drove one time was 22, uh, 23, almost 23 hours. Oh Lord, I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. I'm following Rodney around in a, in a, in a, he was in his van and I'm in a little Fort Tempo. I'm so hungry, God. I'm so hungry. I didn't even, I, listen, I didn't want to at first. I wanted out of the ministry, not because I was angry at God. I wasn't angry at the Lord at all. I just was just uh, nothing happening. Because I'm going around, I'm going around the country from 1988, from 1985 till you know, almost 1990, going around the country, you know, having miracle crusades. I just don't have no miracles. I mean, how would you like to have a miracle ministry, no miracles? <laughs> that was me. I mean, nothing. The only miracle we had is that a few people come back the next night. That's only... <laughs> nothing. Nobody got saved. Nobody got, and I'm evangelist. People supposed to get saved. And I would tell you, I actually, I actually had this thought a couple times. I had the thought because nobody's getting saved, and I'm discouraged, and most people are supposed to be getting saved, but nothing's happening. Nobody's getting healed, nothing. And I actually had the thought, Pastor, to pay somebody to raise their hand, because, you know, in the offering time, I mean, uh, offering, the altar, altar time, when, the, uh, when I'm giving this, uh, you know, the call for people to make, receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior, because I thought to myself, people's just waiting for somebody else, because they're doing like this. They're just waiting for somebody else to raise their hand, and if somebody raises their hand, then they'll raise their hand. And I had the thought to pay somebody to raise their hand that way others would raise their hand. Now, I never did it. I'm just being honest. I did think it. I mean, because I'm actually supposed to. I mean, I did. I, I thunk it. I mean, I tell you. I mean, uh, I, I thought it. <laughs> I thunk it. That's another word going into the dictionary in Kentucky. I thunk it. I did. I thunk it. I, I thunk it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought. <laughs> I thunk it. <laughs> it's, it's already here. Thunk it's in the dictionary. Oh, Alabama. Oh, yeah, yeah, you got right. Shakarabasa. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> but I did crying out, oh God, I'm so hungry for you. Because I wanted out of the ministry. And I did. I said, Lord, let me. I, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, can I get out of the ministry? Because I, I told Pastor, I, I grew I, I show you pictures on my phone. I, 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 for 15 years, I ate, slept, and dreamed, and everything racing because my family were professional race car drivers, and, and that was my. I was going to drive race cars. That was my everything. That was everything to me. My grandfather was mentoring me to take his place. That was everything. There's something very exciting about doing 200 miles an hour. 
for me. I mean, that was just everything. I mean, and, and so I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, there, ministry ain't nothing happening. I said, can I get out of the ministry and just go drive race cars? Let me follow my childhood dream and let that be the platform that you use me in. And the Lord said, no. He said, I've called you. I said, Lord, you've got to do something in me then. You've got to do something in me. And the Lord gave me this scripture. He said, seek me. And I sought him for a year and a half. I sought him. And I can't go into all the whole story. It's just too much time. But I sought him for a year and a half. And I cried, and my wife and I, we drove all over. Honey, she can testify. We drove all over. And I'm crying out, oh, Lord, I'm so hungry for you. I, I, I didn't ask. The ministry I have, I didn't ask. I didn't ask for, I didn't even ask. I wasn't even seeking him for people to be healed. I wasn't seeking him for anything. I just had to know him. I just I didn't seek his hand. I was seeking his face. I, I just got to know you, Lord. I, I'm so hungry for you. I'm so hungry for you, Lord. I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry, Lord. I'm so hungry. Lord, I'm so hungry for you, Lord. I'm so hungry for you, Lord. I'm so hungry. I would cry myself to sleep at night. I mean, I, I would go to sleep at night, and I, I would... So I would go to sleep saying, Lord, I'm so hungry for you. I'm so hungry. I would wake up, and you know, sometimes how you wake up, you, you wake up, but you really not woke up, and I would find myself, the first words coming out of my mouth, Lord, I'm so hungry for you. Lord, I'm so hungry for you. Lord, I'm so hungry for you. Lord, I'm so hungry. Lord, I'm so hungry. Lord, you said if I would seek you, that I would find you when I search for you with all my heart. Lord, I'm so hungry. I'm seeking you. Lord, I got to know you. Lord, I got to know you. I'm so hungry for you. I'm so hungry for you. I'm so hungry for you. God, I'm so hungry for you. I got to know you. I'm so hungry for you. I'm so hungry. Lord, I'm so hungry for you. I'm so hungry for you. Lord, I'm so hungry. I cried out. I didn't, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't know it was going to take almost two years. But I didn't stop. Let me tell you what happened, and I'm going to pray. December of 1989. I said to Rodney, I said, where are you going next? He said, I'm going to Daytona Beach. I said, where are you going after that? He said, I'm going up to Pennsylvania. We're in Kentucky. I had no money. I had $35. I had $35. And I said to him, I said, well, I'll just, I'll just join you when you come back up from Daytona, and we'll hook up, and I'll go with you to Pennsylvania. He said, fine, and left. A couple of days later, because in my mind I'm thinking, okay, I got to get, I got to get some money to get there. The Lord said, I want you to go to Daytona. <laughs> I got thirty-five dollars. I drive a 1988 Ford Tempo, and we've done this trip before. It's going to take me fifty dollars in gas, which them days are gone forever. <laughs> but it's going to take me fifty dollars then, fifty dollars in gas. And I said, Lord, I got thirty-five dollars. And I got to change the oil in my car. And that's $10 because I could do it for 10 So I went to my grandparents' house and changed the oil. The Lord said, go. I said, okay, Lord, I'll go. I said to my wife, I said, honey, we've got to go. I said, I said these words. I said, we'll drive. And when it gets on empty, we either pray in tongues till we get there. And if we run out of gas, then we'll hitchhike. We've got to go. And I went to my grandparents' house, changed the oil, now I'm $25. I said, I said to my wife, there ain't we no Cracker Barrel on this trip. <laughs> I did, I did. I said, there ain't no Cracker Barrel on this trip. It'd be McDonald's burgers, you know, two for a dollar. <laughs> and so we're there. I changed my oil, my grandma, the one, I, the one who died. Uh, and or if she's alive then, <laughs> and I said, uh, she said, she called me. She says, "Honey," she says, "Ricky, sweetie," she says, "Where are you going?" I said, "Well, Mama," I said, "I'm going down to, to Florida." She says, "Oh, sweetheart," she says, "You got any money?" I said, "Oh, Mama, I'm fine." I didn't. Ne I never one time. My wife would tell you we never one time. You know, we, we didn't. We don't live by the motto. You know, faith without hints is dead. We don't. <laughs> we don't drop hints. I said, Mama, I'm fine. She said, 
well, let me give you some money. I said, man, well, I said, I'm fine. She said, no, but I want to. I want to give you some money. I'm like, well, okay, if you really want to, I'll take it. <laughs> so she did something I didn't know. She, I was like, I was shocked. I'm sitting there at the kitchen. She opens up the freezer. And she sticks her hand in the back of the freezer. And she looks over and she said, Now this is where I keep my stash. Don't tell your papa. <laughs> and she pulled out this, you know, box, a uh, temporary box. <laughs> money in it. And she gives me some money. <laughs> it's like one pastor said, you know, talking about cold cash. <laughs> she gives me some money. Now I have enough money for gas to get to Florida. <laughs> Still not enough for cracker bro, but she gives, at least I got enough for gas. And I, I, you know what I have to tell you? I, have to, I, this, this, I think this is the part where people say, well, don't, you just open yourself up so much. Don't tell everything. I, but I just got to. Just, but I have to tell you, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, to, I got carnal for a second. I'm thinking to myself, man, well, how long has that money been there? She said, oh, I've kept it here for years. I'm like, man. I wish I'd have known that when I wasn't saved, you know. I mean, it's like, jeez. I'm sorry, I just had that thought, you know. Jeez. Here's what I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to pray. Remember, you're Chinese. You're not in a hurry, you're Chinese tonight. We still got, well, we've been here, we've been already about three or four, haven't we? So here's what happened. We drove through the night, and here's how, this is something to tell you apart from this is. Just to show you that the Lord sees. Don't think for one moment that you come in here tonight, when you actually had an opportunity to stay home, but you came here tonight. Do not think for one moment that you come in here goes unnoticed with God. Don't think for one moment that you seek it in because it is late. You know you got to get up and go to work in the morning. You got to get your kids to bed because they got to go to school. But yet you stayed here. Don't think for one moment that your decision to stay here goes unnoticed with God. Because he rewards hunger. He rewards hunger. We get there. We go up to Rodney's room. I didn't even know where we was going to stay. As far as I know, we was going to sleep in our car. Or then he says, let's go down on the beach. We went down on the beach. My wife, she loves the beach. She's out there, you know. She gets brown. I get red. She puts lotion on to get brown. I, I put white stuff on to keep me from getting red. She's just fine. And I'm just sitting there looking out the ocean. Oh, Lord, what is my life? <laughs> oh, it's but a vapor. <laughs> Here one moment, gone the next, you know. <laughs> And after this setting, thinking to myself, what am I doing? All of a sudden, I'm going to use you an example, Daniel. All of a sudden, somebody comes up behind me and taps me on my back. Startles me. I jump. I turn around. See, what in the heck is going on? Patting me on my hitting me on my back. And when I turn around, I look in his eyes and I hear these words. The Lord told me to tell you that you've passed the test. <laughs> Turn around and left. And I'm sitting there staring in awe and not know what to think. I just been told that I passed the test. I didn't even know I was being tested. But let me tell you something. 
the very next week, we go to Pennsylvania. And my whole life changes. And what happens now, and what's been happening since 1990, is a direct result of that morning. Sorry, that, that evening, that Wednesday night in Apollo, Pennsylvania, when my whole life changed. Because the fire of God began to fall on me. My whole body burned like fire. I can't even put words to it. My whole body burned like fire. It's, it's what... In, in Matthew 3.11, John said, What I baptize with water, but there's coming one who shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. All I can tell you is in that moment, in that service, the fire, the one who baptizes in fire is baptizing me. And I felt it go all over me. And then it was all in me. And ever since that day, I, 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 most of the time I can't even share it. Ever since that day to now. All, how, how, many, how many years is that? 1990 to now. How many years is that? 26 years. It's never left. It's just stronger. Everywhere we go, everywhere we go, every single nation we go to, every place we go to do a meeting, even if it's in a house of People, 25 sinners, and it happened, of 25 sinners that don't know Jesus. Everywhere we go, everywhere we have gone, ever since that morning in January of 1990, when the fire of God came into me and baptized me, every single place we've gone in 26 years, that same fire falls. And he said, we'll close right now, that if you seek me, you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. Come here, brother, right now, quickly. No, this one. Come. You two, yeah, you come too, but you right here. Come, quickly. Shakara, even as I begin to speak, I see the fire of heaven. Stand right here. Shakara, Ha. Fire. <sighs> Quickly, Skelly, come here. Shalala Mozzale Le Bosch is Fire. Yeah. It's the fire there. Are you an usher? Well, uh, you can't be an usher now. Come here, I need other. Ha 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 ha. Fire. From your. That's it. Take it. It's going right in you. That's the fire of heaven. So you understand something. As believers, you're really not, I mean you are, but you're not gotten to the fullness of it until you get fire. Because everywhere you go, fire should follow you. Because he said, if you seek me, you'll find me when you search for me with all your heart, and I will be found by you, saith the Lord. It means everywhere you go, he's found there. This gentleman right here, in, in, right here on the, right here, yes, yes, you, yeah, you. Let's come stand right here. <laughs> Fire! Yeah, that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's, it, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> now, here's what I want to do tonight, and we'll pray for everybody. But I felt strongly. If there's any generation that needs it, it's the, gener it's the, it's the, the young people right now. 
It's a generation. I'm telling you something right now. And I'm telling you right now that God's raising up the young people in this church. And those of you that are here, you're literally going to shake your generation. You're going to shake your generation. You're going to shake it. The power of God. Come here. Quickly. Quickly. That's the fire of God all over you. How old are you? So, yeah, well, yeah, your generation. You're going to shake it by the power of God. Lift your hands. Fire. And then, oh, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, the same fire fell on me. Oh, I felt that. I felt that. It just left me winning you. Come, this, come, come, you two also. Come here, quickly. All this, all this youth. Come here, youth. Come here. Hari salabun sele robun da ha ha. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Ha ha. Now do all of you go to this church? Lift your hands. Shalom. I feel like just I, I feel like just jumping off this platform right now. Shalom Lift your hands. Ha ha. Ready? Ready? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, baptize every single one of those that stand here right now. Fire! Fire, 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 fire. Oh, yeah, that's it, sweetheart. That's the fire of the Holy Ghost. That's the fire. Oh, yeah. Fire, fire, fire. Shakalama. Fire. Is this your daughter? Huh? Who's your daughter? Fire, fire, fire. Take it, take it, take it. Oh, yeah. Oh, the fire. Oh, yeah. The fire. Oh, the fire. Oh, the fire. Yeah, that's it. That's the power. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Sweetheart, that's the power of the Holy Ghost. Whoa, what's her name? Huh? Clara? Clara? That's the fire. How old are you, Clara? Ha. Earth to Clara. How old are you? That's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Never the same. That's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire! 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 Take it. Shakalabashista. Fire! I want all the youth to come here. Stay right now. If you're if you're in your teens or below, come here. Harabasista. Come. We'll line the kids. Come, we'll don't worry about anything. Just line them up. Ha 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 yeah, that, that right there, that's what happens to me. That's the same fire. That's the same fire. What's, what's your name? Okay, you don't know your name. Well, oh, Jacqueline. How old are you? 16. That fire that's on you right now, that's the same fire that you're going to take to the generations, your generations of the world. And that same fire as you begin to stand and open your mouth and proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that same fire shall fall and begin to baptize. Yeah. Jesus fire. The fire. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 Fire. Fire. Oh, holy sal out of my sheet. Man, these youth are dangerous here. I got to stand sideways. Because when, you, when your youth fall, they fall and their legs are going kicking. Fire. 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 That's the Holy Ghost on you. That's the Spirit of God doing a work on the inside of you. Ah, you're never going to be the same, sweetheart. You'll never be the same. You'll never be the same. From this hour and from this day on, the fire. Whoosh. The oh yeah. The fire. The fire. The fire. The fire. The fire. 
the fire, the fire, the fire. Oh, yeah. Oh, here's another generation shall be shaken. Oh, another generation. Another group of that shall shake their generation. Oh, yeah. Shake your generation. Oh, yeah. Shake your generation. Oh, shake your ge- Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, ah, Lord, she's got red hair. Lord, her hair represents fire. Now, Lord, baptize her in that fire. Oh, ha, ha. Fire. Oh, fire, fire, fire. Ha, ha, ha. Fire, fire, fire. Ha, ha. That's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. The fire. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire. Fire, 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 fire. Ha, ha, ha. Fire, fire, fire. Oh, sweet. Fa 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 fa. She shira ba pa pa risa ka. Oh, fa ba ba pa pa hi. Oh, sala la ba pa ya na mosata. Na la ba ba pa ya mosata la ba si. Ma ba 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 pa ya supo ba si sta. Ah ha. Ah ha ha. Fire. 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 Sala ba fa. Sala la ba fa. That's all right. They're young. Just let them fall on each other. Fire! Fire! Fire. Never the same, UCLA. Never the same. I'll tell you, the campuses of the world shall be shaken by the glory of God. They thought, they thought that they could keep God out. Ho, 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 ho. And their so-called wisdom is folly to God because they can't keep him out. Because they got, we got 17-year-olds like this one being baptized in the fire of the Holy Ghost. Jesus, touch them, Jesus. Touch them, Jesus. Touch them, Jesus. Touch them. The fire of heaven. The fire of heaven. She was saying, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. I'll obey, I'll obey, I'll obey. That's what she was saying. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> fire! Ah, fire! 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 Shakala basita. Ah! Ha ha Come here. Is this your friend, Renee? Yeah. Uh huh. Both of you, come in. Bring your friend. We'll put a spot in the carpet right here. Hallelujah. Now the Lord touched you today, didn't he? Hallelujah. Tell tell the people what the Lord did. Um, I I just have a long time every day. Just, God, I want more of you. I want more of you. I want want your glory to fall on me. And I was going to the beach every morning praying for this and coming here when I can in the evening. And then today he prayed for me and I I fell asleep in the spirit. I was speaking in tongues and crying and I couldn't stop laughing. And I just couldn't stop laughing. It was so fun. (laughs) <laughs> it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. Now, this is your friend? You're Kate? Hello, Kate. Uh, never the same. <laughs> you came hungry. You came. You came saying, Lord, if you could do it for her, Lord, do it for me. Lift your hands. Both of you stand beside each other. <sighs> God. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, fire, 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 that's it, fire, 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 that's it, pimp up out your belly, that's it, pimp up out your belly, that's it, oh, here you go, ha, 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 see, she's already, listen, she's already broke through more than, more than most Christians. I, I, I see teeth. She's smiling. 
Yeah, over the side. Yeah, yeah. Now let that bubble out of your belly. Go ahead and speak that. Joy, tongues. Ha ha, korabashata. Ha ha ha, korribababa. Yeah, that's it. Oh yeah. Ha rabasikalaba. Ha rabasanda rabase. Oh yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Keep on. Keep speaking it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Come on, keep speaking it. Oh. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha ha. Yeah, that's it. Keep speaking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ha rabasuko. Oh, who said it was hard? It's easy. You just got to believe. Hallelujah. Come, you three, come here. All right, just stand here. All right, let's get another place. There's no, we get, I want you together. We'll get another place. Come, we're going to have to come over here. Actually, come here. Stand here. Pick him up. Let me stand right here. Shakarabasita. We're going to pray for you two, everybody. Turn this way. And stand this way. Ha 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 ha. Fire. 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 your name? Huh? Jessica? First Jessica? Oh, Francesca. How old are you? You're 12. You know what's happening right now? What's happening? Fire. <laughs> You're being baptized. Is this your daughter? You're being baptized in the fire of the Holy Ghost. That's what I've been talking about. It's the same thing happened to me. Hell yeah, that's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Lord, when she gets back to her school, does she go to school, public school? Oh, she goes to school here. Okay. So precious. Jesus. That's what it's about. You can have your slide shows. You can have your reasons why Jonah can live in a fish's belly for three days. Or we can have this. Some people would prefer that other stuff. lady right here. You knew I was going to call you, didn't you? You knew it. You knew I was going to call you. Come in. You're going to have to stand right there. It's the fire of God on you. What's happening? What's happening to you right now? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Sometimes it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Lift your hands. Whew. Never the same. Fire! 
fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire. Holy Ghost rag lady. Never the same. Sister Holy Ghost rag lady. Fire. 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 Oh, resaraba, sister. Everybody stand. All the Chinese stand. <laughs> Who, what, what's her name? Dominique? Who does Dominique belong to? Who's her parents? Sister, Dominique, part of the fellowship of the of abiding place. Whew. It's the glory of the Lord. It's the glory of the Lord all over this girl right here. See, it's in times like this, not only does God reveal himself, but he imparts special gifts, special anointings, special callings. It's a very holy, very sacred thing happening right now with this precious Precious, precious girl. You slip your hands. Father, right now, every individual with their hands raised, baptize them right now in your fire. Lord, let special anointings and special gifts be released. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, right now, let everyone be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire now. And she, fire, fire, fire. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's fire. That's Pentecostal fire. That's the fire of God. That's the fire of God. He's baptizing. He's baptizing right now. He's baptizing in fire right now.
I hear the sound of heaven right now. Ah, I hear the sound of heaven right now. Just as Elijah said, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. I hear the sound of heaven right now. I tell you, heaven's here tonight. Lives are literally changing tonight. Realms of glory are being opened unto those that are here tonight. A separating that's taking place here tonight. Oh, the deep is calling to the deep here tonight. Oh, la 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 Come on, church. Hallelujah, <laughs> Mama, 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 m
For the angels of the Lord have descended from on high. <laughs> and they're here tonight and they're handing out gifts from the Father. I, I, I just have to do this. I, I, there's just still certain ones that I, I just I just can't. I, I have to feel this, the draw of the Holy Ghost and just I'm obey him. Sister, and, and is this your niece in the red? Is this your niece in the red? Come bring her. Huh? Michaela, come Michaela. <laughs> <laughs> fire. fire! Fire, 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 fire. I want you and you and, and you. Come. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just turned around. Yeah, yeah. And you too. I was going to call you. Would you come? Yes, you. And you too. You too. And he'd come too, sister. ha, 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 ha. Fire 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 Bring her here, right here. She's got a whole carpet area. Got a carpet area. I'm speaking to your spirit. A little bit say, a lot of more so, but probably a little bit of a little bit of a Never the same. Never the same. Never the same. Never the same. <laughs> never the same. Never the same. Never the same. Never the same, Michaela. Never the same, Michaela. La 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 Nala la 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 la
la la la mo ro ma ne le le mo mo la ba ra ba sa le le ro ba ba da le ba u ro ba da le ma na called you Geneva, but you are Geneva. Oh! Oh! Fire! Holy le 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 You need a double dose because there's two of you. See, there's just, we, we're not, we're just, oh, whatever the Holy Ghost wants. I want these two. Just look, you, you got your hands on your face like this. Yes, you and you. You was waiting for me to call you. Because you come tonight hungry for God. Desiring to know him and for him to touch you. Never the same. Never the same. He heard your cry. He heard your cry. Fire! Never. Ha 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 ha. Fire! Never the same. Ha 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 ha. 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 Ha 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 ha. Fire! That's it. Fire, fire, fire. Ha 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 well, you know what? Since you are Chinese, it's only been, you know, we've only been here four and a half hours. That's it. If we used to leave now, the Chinese will call us backslidden. And we're not going to let that happen, are we? So we got, we're getting ready for Brother Joshua. <laughs> Nikki, come, come here. Do not make your daughter drink by herself. Listen, in, in order, in order for you. To have a strong, close relationship with your kids and your parents, 
you have to drink together. You've got to drink together. You've got to drink together. Put her by her daughter. If she makes it. She's the you got the bobble head, then you got the bobble body. I don't I don't think she's gonna make it to her daughter. Ha ha. Oh, re ma li la la la. Oh, la la li la 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 You know, I can tell you in all the years of, 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 of meetings that some of the greatest miracles have happened right at the end. And um, this is how it's happened. I tell you, heaven's here tonight. Heaven's here tonight. the same, never the same, never the same. Never the same, never the same, never the same. Church, the meetings never end. But I will tell you, don't forget our product in the back. And, be, and I need you to come and be my friend on Facebook. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just come stand right here. Hands. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Whenever you hunger, whenever you need finances, he's more than enough. He's more than enough. You just have to say, my God is more than enough. He's more than enough. Just say that he'll provide. He'll supply all your needs. It says on the Bible. He will provide all your needs. He's more than enough. Never worry. Never stress again. He's more than enough. He's more than enough. You need to realize it right now. Those watching by web, those are here tonight. You need to realize right now, revelation, that he's more than enough for you. He'll provide everything you need. If you're living on the streets, he'll provide everything you need. You need. If you're living in a car, he'll provide the gas you need. He'll provide the money you need for the food that you need to eat. He'll provide the food. He'll provide everything for you. Fight! I told you people being raised up to be launched out. 
but they don't have the wisdom of the man that they're going with. They have the fire of the Holy Ghost and impartations from heaven. Because this is a launching pad. There's one on the East Coast and there's one on the West Coast. There's going to be more that are started. Are you waving something at me? We already did the offering. We didn't do it? For those that are on the floor, ushers, those that are on the floor, ushers, go get their pocketbook and bring it to me. I forgot my brother.